What's up everybody of the Mangoos, you are awesome, and today I'm bringing you the Get Through Gaming official Agnes Cup EU tournament for Overprime's final beta test. Get Through Gaming did a fantastic job of setting this up as a grassroots community-led tournament. However, since this is a community-driven thing done with the custom game mode, the draft took place in Discord, so I'll put the bands on screen when the teams pick their heroes. Quarterfinals were single elimination, while the semifinals and the finals were best of three. I will warn you now that we, we had some technical difficulties during game one of the finals, so I will unfortunately be excluding that one from the video. This was a lot of fun to cast with my good buddy Jelly Knees. Go check him out on YouTube and Twitch for uh, for any of the future tournaments. And uh, it, it was really well organized, so be sure to join the GTG Discord link below for any information about future tournaments. So a gadget is still open for pick. Phase absolutely still open for pick. Two very strong characters in this game, Murdoch as well. After banning the Twin Blast and Revenant, that leaves Sparrow, Murdoch, and Wraith open. Now Wraith isn't much of a carry, but you're going to see the Murdoch come through for. Wow! Oh, Whoa. we do have a gadget on Raylios. Absolutely amazing picks coming through here. And everybody, this is Team Clown Nine versus Team Gadget Labor. And gadget labor not playing with gadget <laughs> i know it's it's really sad to see but they must have prioritized the gadget pick on team clown nine versus team gadget labor so it will be very interesting to see that murdoch come through we've got a sparrow instead sparrow is a much more late game scaling carry comparatively to murdoch so they're gonna have to play a little bit safer in that lane having the muriel is going to really help giving those shields out but the narbash on team gadget labor will also make a difference here you can also see in this draft menu we've got some bronze silver and golds on Team Gadget Labor, but then also Team Clown9 has some Platinums and Golds across the board on their team. We've got both teams just buying their items, getting ready to go. You can see that they're buying in there, and we're about to get started. One thing I've seen a, a bit in this tournament is they will buy three wards just right out the gate. <laughs> just <laughs> Before they buy anything else, they stack wards, which is good to see. We've got a little bit of a stack coming out from Team Clown9. There are four of them stacked on this left side. They might be trying to pull some kind of play here going into the enemy's jungle, but it, it looks like they might... That invade. They might just be setting up to keep the pressure out for this game. There's wards all over the field. Absolutely. Team Clown9 uh -huh. has already placed two wards, and we have not seen anything out of Gadget Labor yet. Oh, we're going to see some fighting down in the mid lane. Gadget and Howitzer poking each other a little back. The mine already goes off, putting Howitzer about a fifth of his health down already at level one. At one level ability. one, yeah. Oh my god. How, how is that gadget mine hitting so hard so early? <laughs> and he is using the best skin for best girl over here. Oh, absolutely. Her best skin by a long shot. Severog placed a ward down, saw the Sereth, and is actually getting revealed by Sereth's ward down there as well. We'll go back to the mid lane, see Gadget poking out a little bit here. Just throwing out those mines, keeping the pressure out against this howitzer. Muriel in the, air, in the jungle, keeping some pressure as well, making sure where the enemy jungler is, what the rotation timings they have, knowing that they're going to be in a safer lane with Sparrow and Muriel compared to Narbash and Murdoch. And I love the, the the gadget basic attacks look so good, especially in this in this spectator mode. Like you can really see the arc of that lightning absolutely we've already striking seen minions she forced howitzer down to go get the mana buff out of the side of the mid lane and is already putting him howitzer down to half health while still getting the minion push up she's definitely For struggling force the potion usage out of him force the potion usage potion usage out of him already she hasn't had to use anything which is absolutely wild the pressure that gadget can put out into the mid lane even against someone like howitzer if we look over to the right side of the jungle actually we will see that feng mao is stealing the blue buff from Team Clown9. He has invaded the jungle, taking this blue buff away from them, also warded for safety on both sides of him. He will look like he's getting this blue buff. Grux is coming over. Gadget is walking over to the right side as well. We'll be able to see what's happening. Looks like they know something is happening here. Ooh, Big Mao will get caught out a little bit. Gadget's going in. We've got Grux as well. And they will He's get this kill down. on the Feng Mao. Howitzer trying to come in to save his friend, but it's been a little too late. He has to back out. Was that blue buff worth it? No. <laughs> no, it was not. The the I think that was a perfect ward by the Severog there. Probably revealed Feng Mao on his way into the jungle. And then the enemy team was able to just rotate around. They do have really good ward coverage now over this blue side of the jungle for Grux. They've got three wards revealing basically anywhere he's going to walk. 
he will be revealed. Feng Mao now back on his blue buff over on their blue side for Team Gadget Labor. And let's check in on our duo lane. Duo lane has been all the way pushed up under the tower. Looks like they will be taking this mana buff on the side of the lane, which is going to be supremely helpful to just keep them in lane a little bit longer while they have nothing to do with the minions pushed up. Mana is far more important to spare than you may think because she gets a lot of poke with her right click, which requires mana. So the more she can poke, the better off she is. All right, we've got our first backs coming through from Gadget and Grux heading back into the lane. Grux was able to secure some of his jungle camps on the right side. Of course, did not get that blue buff, but it did transfer across. We've got the Gadget with one assist and Grux with a kill. So Gadget is back. I mean, this howitzer is just getting forced out. He wasn't able to push the lane very much, already having to go back with no mana. And Gadget's now just going to get a free push on the lane and be able to actually rotate over. We're going to see a fight break out and potentially in the left lane, Feng Mao was heading in for a gank. Let's see. Nope. Feng Mao, he's heading out. He was able to walk in nice. there, but Clown9 Smart was paying decision. attention. Grox, Grox was right there, and it, and it looked like Gadget was ready to rotate at any moment. They may have picked Feng Miao up. Gadget might be going after Feng Miao right now. Let's see. Gadget is definitely pushing him off. He's level 3, so he's very much behind after that death from the blue buff steal. Gadget forcing Howitzer to take half health of damage in just a few abilities here. And is able to now rotate over with basically freedom. She is revealed on a ward walking to that left side. But a fight is breaking out. Grux lands a pull onto Narbash. Sparrow and Muriel helping fight that out. But Feng Mao shows up to be able to push them off of that tower. Grux is and taking very little. Comes, but Gadget comes Gadget in from the side. The lands the mine. Ooh, pushes Feng Mao down to low health. The Narbash goes down from Gadget as well. Absolutely incredible rotations yes. out from Gadget. This is why you don't let Gadget through. This is why you don't <laughs> let Gadget through the draft. You can't do it. She's just way too way too versatile, way too much damage. But now Howitzer gets to be able to free ping this lane. Hopefully you can get a little bit of farm and maybe compete with this Gadget a little bit. We can see Gadget's already basically back into the lane after that gank, getting one kill and pushing Fen Mao back to the base. He does get the minions. Oh, maybe not quite under tower. Does get them under tower. He is mana -less, though. So he has to go pick up this mana buff on the side of the lane. Now, if we take a look back at that Narbash. Narbash is planting some wards. Level 4. Trying to make sure that they can keep control on these objectives in the side. But Gadget is there. Getting pinned down between the Howitzer and the Narbash. Narbash oh, does land the thunk Gadget. on Gadget. But Gadget's able to blink out. Howitzer not be able, able to do enough damage early on. Ooh, Howitzer ults oh, up to the sky. The he has no mana left, though. If Gadget can turn on him, get some good damage out, he will go down. Grux shows up, takes out the Howitzer. That Let's was see. well played by Howitzer to immediately ult whenever that Gadget ult went down, but Ooh. it doesn't work out for the nice pull. From oh, Grux. Narbash is going to go down to the He's grenade dead. from He's Gadget. Dead. Two kills to Team Clown9. Four to zero at the moment. Grux's rotation on there was perfect to take out that Howitzer. The damage was already dealt by the gadget, so absolutely easy kill for Grux to get in there and get back out, as well as pick up the Narbash on their way. They did force the blink out of gadget, which is a small victory for them. They can, I think they'll take whatever they can get at this point. How's Severog and Sarath going? I, you know, I did not expect to see Sarath picked for the offline. <laughs> Both hitting level six right now. He is getting pushed in a little bit by his minions, but looks like we're going to see a fight break out. It's like they know we were watching them, Mangoose. They see, know, us, right? <laughs> they see us jump on camera, and then they're like, oh, we, perfect. Yeah, we'll absolutely go in there and check this out. But he is taking a little bit of damage from Sarath. Severog, building up his stacks right now, has two defensive items as well as his blink. Just trying to slowly get built up into this game. Severog will not be super offensive until he is going to be in that late game point where he's got so many stacks under him, so much health, that he just turns into an unkillable monster. We've got Grux. Uh, yeah, a, slow a slow moving solo lane is only good for Severog. Absolutely. It's not good for, Se for, for, for Sarah, no matter how much he's farming. If he's getting those stacks and he's just being unpestered the entire time, he is going to turn into a late game monster. Absolutely, but let's check out the Grux is actually invading, going behind this enemy team's Howitzer, going up into the Shadow Well, looking for maybe a nice jump out in there, pulling him in, as well as getting a good gadget. Oh, Howitzer is pushing up. This is Grux's perfect opportunity to get in there, do some damage. He's going to stun out with his ultimate. He's going to hold on to that pull. He will. Howitzer does ult away, but Gadget Mine finishes him off. Absolutely brilliant. Gadget Mine will care about Patient, once it's on your head, it's on your head. We've got Feng Mao watching the Grux run through the Prime Spirit camp. Sarath has teleported across. They're setting up for this oh, Prime Spirit. Feng Mao enters onto Grux. 
Grux is able Grux to... Grux is able to dash out. This is absolutely perfect. Four members on the Prime Spirit. Sereth goes in alone, absolutely by herself. Gadget and Grux able to take this in, but she has to blink out. It is a 4v2 right now. The enemy, the team of Clown9 is standing by, waiting for this fight to come back into their jungle, but everyone is just escaping. Nobody wants to take this fight. 28 seconds on the portal, so no escapes there. Feng Mao has to get out with half health and no mana. Howitzer has shown back up to the fight and is able to ping Sparrow with a random uh, R2000 rocket, but it lands. We've got everyone resetting back to their lanes. There will not be a Prime Spirit right now. That looked like a super powerful missile. I don't know, I don't know if you think. <laughs> We've got also Severog was able to just free push. Because that Sarah took the side portal out to the left dual lane, that means Severog is able to get those minions, get under tower, and now take this free minion before he backs. If he backs. Uh, absolutely. I mean, he's got health regen now. A little, and he, 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 might, he might just stay. Let's look at the minion count difference between our Sparrow and the Murdoch. Murdoch sitting at 60 minions or Teons and Sparrow at 46. Slightly further down, but Sparrow does have two assists to help make up for that as well. So I would say they're about even in terms of gold count between the two. You might see a fight World break out here. Oh, Sparrow steals Sparrow the mana snipes buff. It, snipes it away. Oh, no, that would have been so good for the Narbash, too. Mana Absolutely. equals health with Narbash. That was she a just took a lot of mana away from him. Fantastic <laughs> snipe. So across the map, we're actually going to see some plays coming out here. Raleo's back in the mid lane pushing out this howitzer. But there is some dominance being set up around this Prime Spirit or Prime Guardian underling. You've got two wards from Team Gadget Labor on this Prime underling. Uh, Grux does not know he's revealed by this ward, but they want to make sure and keep that in mind because that is one of the strongest objectives on the map in Paragon the Overprime. Looks like Grux might be going for it. Let's see Grux. No, he... He's going to be teleporting across, setting up for a duo lane gank over here. We've got Sparrow back under, taking some minions, keeping the lane pushed out a little bit, but it is against them, which means Grux can come around from behind. He's going up behind which them right exactly now. We're going to see doing. something bust out here. A good pull lands from the Grux, hitting Narbash. Narbash, very, very low. Can Sparrow pick up the Mild. kill? She gets stunned by a thunk and will not pick up the kill. But Howitzer and Feng Mao coming in from the right side now. This could be turning into a 4v3 very quickly. Sparrow half health. Howitzer blinks Chaotic in, takes Rose out the in. Muriel very quickly. Feng Mao finishes her off. Sparrow, very low health. An ult coming through from Murdoch, and Murdoch takes the snipe on Muriel, or on Sparrow. Gadget coming in from really behind lands a good ultimate. Grux pulls two under tower, forcing the Murdoch Pull to ult the out. Tower and into the ultimate. Grux is taking out the Howitzer on the right side of the lane. Gadget's trying to fight 3v1 over here, but will survive long enough. Takes the Feng Mao very, very low. Severog teleports across and picks up a kill on the Murdoch. That is now three deaths for and Team that's a, that's Gadget Labor. Down. Narbash is dead. Narbash is dead. Absolutely. That was an ex brilliant. excellent gank. Very good counter rotate that, that Howitzer ultimate was on point but cloud nine is just way too ahead right now absolutely and I, i've been wondering when they're going to start to kick this deer and they're finally taking it <laughs> and that was a four for three trade or four for two i apologize muriel and sparrow going down on team clown nine and we've lost the feng mao howitzer murdoch and narbash for team gadget labor we will see the prime spirit go down here basically no contest here four members from team clown nine everyone's still resetting on team gadget labor murdoch back into the lane narbash coming through the jungle howitzer back into the mid lane and feng mao back into his jungle as team uh clown nine resets a little bit actually only gadget goes back surprisingly is only member of her team after that fight to go back but gadget sitting at four kills zero deaths absolutely dominating her mid lane. Went back. They just didn't go back the nice way. <laughs> <laughs> Gadget doing very well for herself. This is, I mean, Gadget is a very, very strong pick. We might see out of the other team here that they're looking for a Prime Spear or Prime yeah, Guardian yeah, under labor setting up around that Prime Guardian. Let's see. Uh, they might just be checking it to make sure that the enemy team isn't taking it. Severog trying to keep eyes out. He can see that there's someone in the bush behind the Prime, Prime Guardian underling. Pit. We've got three in the mid lane with now Narbash, Howitzer, and Feng Mao is on his way. Narbash is heading left, though. They might be trying to set up for this. He does not walk on the ward, so they don't know that he didn't leave, but Gadget can see the bush twitching right here. We might see a fight break out. Narbash is waiting for a good thunk to come out of this, and he misses the thunk, unfortunately. Misses went, went right by her head. That, that had to have scared the shit out of Raylio's <laughs> on Gadget. All right, we see that Sereth is actually clearing wards on the other side. She placed a ward herself in this deep bush and clears the ward. Severog coming down it might turn into a fight here. Feng Mao actually just teleports out. Grux and Gadget heading from mid lane to, to the right side. 
we're gonna see a fight break out here Sarah caught on the wrong side of the battlefield but will escape because team clown nine is not aware that she's there she's able to walk out while they keep some vision on the enemy team gadget labor playing very cautious right now and i think that's advisable um they're, they're kind of getting dunked on a little bit they need to just reset farm up oh the 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 prime is being taken by grux but he uh he leaves it They've got I'm some words on the map. So they're able to see all three members that are currently on the right side of the map for Team Gadget Labor. They have four members across. Sparrow teleported across from the duo lane, leaving Muriel by herself, but is now able to help contest on this Prime Guardian underling. Oh, we have a teleport across from Narbash. Narbash in the pit. Grux diving back in. Let's see what's going on. Narbash takes a lot of damage without any recourse, really. Severog able to knock him back, keep him out of the fight. Howitzer ult comes in. Prime Guardian underling under 1,000 well, health. Chasing well. around. Gadget ult comes through. They do pick up the Prime Guardian underling. Feng Mao stuck in the pit now by himself, takes the damage, will go down two members for nobody and the Prime Spirit Underling, or Prime Guardian Underling, I apologize, go to Cloud9. And then Gadget Ultimate, while it didn't hit anybody, it kept them from pushing forward to try and take that that Prime Guardian Underling. From, from oh, we're going to get an immediate drop in the mid lane. Now, that wasn't an ideal drop. There was more damage left on the table by that Prime Guardian Underling. By dropping these under these underlings on the tower directly it does immediate damage to the tower rather than waiting for a charge to go off but they do get that mid lane tower they are pushing it in slightly trying to keep some pressure on this mid lane while the prime guardian underling is pushing up but on the right side we do see that their prime guardian underling goes down right side we're going to see a fight break out muriel lands the stun on Sarah, and we've got severog looking like he may be backing but he might just take this health buff for himself they're trying to keep muriel. pressure up on all lanes right now Muriel is far stronger than I've been give, giving her credit for. I played her last night, and holy crap, is she strong. <laughs> the range on all of her abilities seems to outrange everybody else in the game, especially her right click, which seems to travel across the map to give your your, your friendly shielding. Cross the map through, through terrain. You can shield people from anywhere with Muriel. We see a whiff of the subjugate from that Severog. However, he is just in there trying to get some stacks and Sarath backed out of her lane. Across the map, we've got the Murdoch and Narbash keeping some pressure up on this duo lane, trying to push this map up. They know they lost their mid tower, so they're trying to find pressure where they can on this map. They are down currently nine kills in this game, so it will be very difficult to get back into it, but they're looking for the pressure where they can. Feng Mao dropping wards, checking the jungles, making sure everything they, they know where everyone is. We've got the Narbash playing a proxy for that Muriel, not letting her back into lane. She will have to walk a the long way around while Sparrow and Murdoch duke it out in this side lane. One thing I love so far from this game, Mangus, is we're seeing so much ward coverage from these teams. You can see the slight blue and red outlines on the map, and you can see on the minimap the amount of wards that are being placed. We've got a Narbash coming in on this right lane for Team Gadget Labor in the duo lane. Let's see if anything he will come up. He got picked up by a ward and immediately stunned out before he could do anything with his thunk. Which is just yeah. absolutely incredible. We've got Grux wards on the left side games. of the map. Wards win games. Absolutely. Gadget now rotating to the left side of the map. Murdoch is backing. This might be a good opportunity for Sparrow and Muriel to push up without really the threat of taking damage from Murdoch. Looks like they're slow playing it a little bit. Still six minions pushing against Sparrow's four minions. Now down to three. We've got Grux now in the enemy jungle, taking some jungle camps away from Feng Mao. Oh, I lied. He's just watching the plays, waiting for someone to push up see if they can he make it through he is and spotted on a ward there is a portal for for narbash to take narbash does go across the map into severog's face severog and he's fighting now sarah nice and narbash gets from severog nice bat away oh he's got a body block now but the fat boy is a, is a, is a quick boy he is using his ultimate i think this might be a bit of a wasted ultimate from narbash I just to escape from agree. the severog Severog, especially having the escape tools and the just health pool that he has. But across the map, we're also now going to see a Prime Spirit or Wind Spirit go down. And we've gotten to basically no contest with three members of the team on the right side of the map. It's very difficult for anything to happen. Howitzer does get caught out in the jungle here. He has pushed way too far forward for, for how his team is doing right now. And uh, I don't think he's going to be able to make anything happen. Nice ultimate, but of course, he had a mine on his head when he ulted, so he just <laughs> dies in midair. Back across the side, we've got Nar we've got Feng Mao and Sarath now duking it out with the Severog. Severog holding his own very well. Low on mana, but does take half health of that Sarath. Feng Mao now pushing in. Grux now also back into the enemy Feng Mao's jungle, trying to keep this Feng Mao behind. A very strong Feng Mao will be a problem late game no matter what. So if you keep him behind throughout the entire game, 
he's able to hold on. Ooh, Feng Mao does get caught Surprise. out by two people. We've got the Grux going in a mine on and Feng up, Mao's head. Gadget. Oh my gosh, the damage. It Just... comes Muriel in to save the day in case it's necessary. Of course it's not necessary. <laughs> and they take out Feng Mao. They take his jungle. They take his life. Poor Feng Mao. Absolutely. And several shoulders are getting fucking big over here. And he is just, he's able to slam this Sarath and, and, and push her out of lane. If he's um, only one tier away from the max shoulder stack, he doesn't have quite the long spikes on the top of him quite yet. Absolutely crazy so far. They're going to put some pressure out onto this tower in the right lane. That means they will take tower in the right lane. We've also got Sparrow taking tower in the left lane. So they will control all three towers now are down 14 clown nine or 14 gadget labor rather clown nine ahead at 13 to two and they have zero damage on their towers like zero damage on their towers right now the this ward is, coverage uh, absolutely against team gadget labor right now it is very much a game where they're hoping that team clown nine messes up more than it's going to be easy for them to get back into the game they can't push up very far. Team Cloud9 has shown rotations to be their strength. So they're passing along. They're rotating immediately as needed when this game goes out. We're going to see some very interesting plays, I'm sure, coming up here as we get into the team fight part of the game. Now, I mean, we're talking about how powerful Gadget is, but Ray Leos is just an excellent mid laner in general. We saw him, well, I saw him in the first match um, just dominate with Howitzer. But uh, you, you can't let a, a guy like that get a hold of the highest, pro probably the most powerful hero in the game. Absolutely. Sparrow holding her own on these minions, just trying to keep the minions from crashing onto the tower. On the right side, we've got three members stacked up in Severog, Muriel, and Grux, waiting for that second prime, oh, the full prime guardian to spawn. The prime guardian is being started Ooh, by the Right at Grux, 20 minutes. With Severog and Muriel playing the proxy, waiting for their team to back out or potentially show up and then be able to help with that escape. He's doing a lot of damage, not taking a lot of damage, but we might see a fight break out here. Howitzer getting rooted by the Subjugate. Now Muriel coming in with the shield. Nice stun. Howitzer goes up into the air to ult and push some damage out back, but Gadget shows up now, landing the mines on to the Sarath. Sarath and Howitzer now trying to go around, trying to keep pressure on this Prime Guardian. Another Subjugate lands perfectly on Howitzer. Perfect Gadget ult, takes out Howitzer. Sarath also going to go Prime's very, very low, if not go health. down. We're going to see now the rest of the team Gadget Labor show up. Sarath does not make it out. Gadget picks up the kill and the Prime Guardian goes down. That is two kills for nobody and a Prime Guardian for Team Clown 9. Feng Mao caught on the wrong side of the jungle now. Gadget may be able to take him out, but Gadget goes for the mana buff instead. We're going to see mid lane pushed out now. The Prime Guardian does do initial burst of damage, and that is the oh, main benefit. Oh, we see Grux tower diving, but he did get thunked, and now he's getting caught in a Narbash ultimate. Will we see ooh, Grux ooh, go down? No. Sparrow picks up a Narbash kill. Feng Mao very low. The minions now actually still taking damage from this mid lane tower. They're going to hold it out, potentially tank it out. Enemy inhibitor going down. We're going to see the first inhibit of the game taking out this. And Grush is standing and he doesn't care. He knows it's going to go down. And Gadget gadget dealt half of Murdoch's health in one yeah, he's line. Pick up another kill. We're going to see if another kill is picked up here. Severog pushed the right lane all the way in, benefiting from that Prime Guardian. But they look like they are going to disengage from this fight. They laid a really great foundation, and now they're capitalizing on it and keeping that pressure up. But Muriel they, is they, getting very low, but manages to ult out, saving the life <laughs> of the team, and dies to a Murdoch oh, snipe. No, that will oh, be no. the that was really well timed by Murdoch. How did he? How did he know? How did he know? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant play from both teams there, but. Team Clown 9 just dominating this game, slowly building their lead up, taking the first inhibitor, getting both the left and right inhibitor very low with that Prime Guardian burst. And now all the lanes are against the Team Gadget Labor. There are a lot of wards on this Prime Spirit. It is coming Look up very, it. very soon. Look at all these wards. Lit up like a Christmas tree, Mangus. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> nope, that Murdoch, he did. He, there's no way he could have had vision on that burial, I wouldn't think. Yeah, that, the, he must have had to just guess where she was going to land. Uh, it, it could have been a guess that maybe the team had some vision on her because they were chasing them through that jungle. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, brilliant Murdoch snipe. Absolutely incredible. May help him get back into this game a little bit as he is pushing the side lanes down, trying to build yeah, up some so. farm. I, I don't have that much faith in him right now. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's catching back up. We've got the Team Clown 9 setting up for this Prime Spirit to spawn. Now, if you guys don't remember the last tournament for Overprime, Team Clown 9 was one of the finalists versus the NA team.
This time around, it is separated into NA and EU, but Clown9 has shown in the past their dominance in this game, and it looks like that is continuing. Earth Spirit has been started by Team Clown9. They are sitting on a couple wards, so it may get engaged upon here, but we've got Feng Mao left side of them, but a full five-man team waiting in the wings. Feng Mao coming in on this Earth Spirit, but if he steps out too far, he might go down here. He does have to teleport out. He is just trying to stay away from this Prime Spirit. Maybe try and go in for a cheap steal. Oh, but it does not work. Team Clown 9 will take him out and land everything on him, taking out the Feng Mao. Uh, I think at that point, Feng Mao probably should have just given it up to him. Uh, he was yeah. 1v5 in that fight. The second he had to teleport out initially, he should have just accepted it and went back. But giving another kill to Team Clown 9 just propels them even further. And we're now in a 5v4 for the next 18 seconds. This is the point in the game where your mental is a little broken and you start going for those Hail Marys like, you know what, at least I'm going to steal this from them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you may have beaten us, but I stole that Prime Spirit from you. But uh, yeah, it didn't work out for him, unfortunately. We've got the mid lane Super Teons all the way pushed up into the inhibitor. So now Team Clown 9 can just five man in one of these lanes and push it down. The, We're going to see Grutch charge under this tower, 100%. <laughs> it is full 5v5. How is their ults to get the Team Clown 9 backed off a little bit, but it does not deal any damage to the enemy or to Clown 9's heroes, which is a very big ultimate that is off the table now. Inhibitor down to half health. Sparrow just absolutely bursting it down with her range. Able to take out this inhibitor. No engagement from Team Gadget Labor, but a beautiful Grux pull into a Gadget ult in Serith is going down. Howitzer had to teleport out. Narbash, very, very low. Might go down here as well. We see Feng Mao running out, but that is two deaths on Team Gadget Labor with two inhibitors down now as well. They've caught off the Murdoch. We've got three members of the team chasing down the Murdoch. Takes him out. No problem there. That is now a four or five V2. They're going to work on this right inhibitor while Severog just tanks it out, but they look like they might just end the game with their minions pushed up through the mid and left lanes. These Grux pulls into the Gadget Ultimate have been devastating. Absolutely devastating this entire match. Absolutely. Enemy core taking lots of damage very quickly down to 50% already. This game is coming to a close very rapidly. 20 to 3. Let's see 20% down. They're just going to push it down and this will be the end of the game. Three. Great game from Clown9. Gadget Labor, they stuck in there. They did their absolute best. Um, a lot of respect for some of the plays that they made. But yeah, Clown9 just charges through. They were the best team in the last tournament that we did. Um, best EU team. So um, we kind of expected them to do well here. Yeah, when we look at these damage charts, I mean, you can definitely see the dominance that Gadget's able to assert in this game. She did almost 25,000 damage to heroes. The next highest would be the Grux on Team Clown 9 at 13,000. So she's almost doubled the damage in the same amount of time as that Grux. And Grux was in almost every single fight as well. So Gadget yeah. definitely putting out some strong, strong plays there. And everyone on Team Clown9 doing very well. We've got a 3, 1, and 6 Sparrow, a 10, 0, and 10 Gadget, 2, 0, 5 Severog, 5, 0, 9 Grux, and even a 0, 2, 10 Muriel. Absolutely incredible play. And it was one of those things that the, once the game got started and the kills started flying, it was really hard for Gadget Labor to keep up and stay in the game. They were just getting behind on gold and behind on objectives and just could not get back into it. Yeah, that was a very exciting stuff. Um, again, you can't let Gadget through. You can't let Gadget through. She's got you. Got a banner. You got a banner or picker. Um, I something needs to be done about Gadget. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Absolutely. So while we know that Team Clown Nine is moving on to the semifinals, we're still waiting for some other games to get closed out here. We're gonna open up one of our other casters, that the Russian streamer that is casting the game. We're going to open up his stream and see his quarterfinals match until we're ready to start semifinals. And but, I'm going to go grab some water. <laughs> One of the biggest takeaways, guys, from that first game is that you can absolutely see that there is definitely some coordination involved in this game. There's absolutely some of those MOBA elements. We see this game called a battler a lot of the time. And that's clearly just not the case. You can play the MOBA elements, you can play the game, and you can still dominate these wins out in 25 minutes, for instance. Walk around him and kill all the squishies. <laughs> exactly. But here we go into our pick bands for this one, Mangoose. Let's see where we're going. We've already got our bands. Like we said, it is Gadget, Howitzer Band, and also Narbash and Feng Mao. So we're going to see these teams select their lanes and then a quick lock-in of who they're playing. 
Now, what are these team names again? I didn't quite catch it. That is Team Full Send versus Team Pyro. Awesome. So we do have a Murdoch versus Twin Blast, as I as I expected. We have a Revenant probably going off lane. Yep, Steel support on one side and Muriel support on the other. Absolutely perfect. Severog and Rampage both. So very two very large tanks on the side of I believe that that is Team Pyro, but I will be double checking that for us. We're gonna have a Wraith versus Belica mid lane matchup. Belica should be able to. Um sap a lot of his mana to, to keep him from sniping but uh that's going to be an impressive lane right there absolutely and yes so several dog rampage are on team pyro we're going to see these games get started as these teams buy their items and head to their lanes the name of the hero sees victory in the fountain getting ready let's see if we see an invade haven't seen a lot of invades i expected to see more invades in this tournament but, uh, <laughs> i think the if you guys have not played paragon the overprime since the last closed beta test, they have actually removed the level three effective start where you start with all of your abilities and instead you start with one. And I think that really cuts down on the level of invades that we're going to see from these games. So on this screen, we've got it is team full send in the blue green and we've got team pyro in the orange. We've already got wards going down. We got a little bit of a scrap in the uh in the middle of the lane but they're going to back off we're not going to see an invade this time the solo laners are squaring off looks like we're going to have a leash for red on on um on full sin's part and we got a leash for red on pyrogen's part uh pyro is actually on blue mangoes this is an asymmetric oh, map my bad. come on Play the jungle My sometime. Bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't fuck around in the jungle. What are you talking about? All right, the Bellica is there in the mid lane already, getting a slight push on the Wraith, but everyone is now walking to their lanes. Jungle camps full spawn, side lanes pushing into each other. We've got a Revenant off lane versus Severog, Steel Murdoch versus Twin Blast and Muriel, Grux is versus Rampage in the jungle, and then Wraith versus Bellica in the mid lane. Grux does not know he's standing directly on a ward, does get pushed out of there. Two wards already down from the Muriel and Twin Blast on Team Pyro. But let's see, Grux is looking like he's going to try and make something happen here in the mid lane. Going in already, but just going to walk through, scare that Bellica, and go back to his jungle camps. <laughs> and I'm feeling bad for this Severog right now, having to go up against a Revenant. However, if you're going to go up against an ADC in the off lane, you're going to want it to be Revenant because he does Revenant or, or, or Sparrow because they really don't have the escape potential that some of the other ones do. Absolutely. And this Revenant we saw a little bit when we first came over here was doing some damage from the bush but he's is absolutely pushing the Severog yeah, out of lane Severog took a Jason risky direction away. to go he's trying to go towards his rampage but he might go down here Revenant he does. first, first blood, goes blood Revenant. on a Severog should have just run what? towards his tower a very strange pathing there from the Severog trying to get to his rampage but he would have been safer under the tower and we're back into the game already duo lane pushed in a little bit towards team pyro but fairly even so far in the damage department. Murdoch is a little bit lower. Steel's gonna be able to protect him though as they get to level three. The damage coming out from Muriel into a blast is a lot better early on. Ooh, triple grenades down on the Murdoch and he does take a little bit more damage. In the mid lane, we actually just saw a gank come out from Grux. Grux did not make anything happen from it, but a mid lane does go out nevertheless, showing that Bellica is a little bit lower on health than Wraith. Wraith holding the favor in the lane right now with the minions pushed a little bit towards him. Bellica not gonna have a hard time stepping up at the current moment. If you guys didn't know, on Twin Blast, you can quick add quick cast to your grenades and hold that button down and just fire all of them at once. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. But Mangoose, going for this game, who do you predict so far is going to look like they're eking out the win in the first three minutes of this game? Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I'm going to have to go... Um, I've already forgotten the, the their, their, their names. We have to go with full sin because they did take that Revenant off lane. I think he's just going to dominate that that Severog, especially since we saw the Severog take a very weird route there. Uh, if they're going to have two stacked ADCs in the late game, they're just going to dominate. Absolutely. We just saw a fight break out there. Mid Wraith actually goes down. He had no mana, so no escape potential. Grux is taking a lot of damage and will go down as well. Mangus might be eating his words sooner than we I know, think. Right? Team Pyro <laughs> takes two kills for nothing in that mid lane and both of them go to that Bellica and absolutely incredible fans this match were howitzer gadget narbash and uh feng mao those were the four bands for this game 
let's take a look back at this Severog in the off lane against Revenant. He's getting pushed in half health against this Sev this Revenant, having a very hard time probably getting up and getting those stacks. Let's see what the difference is. 24 minions to 18. He's actually doing pretty decently, all things considered, in keeping up on that farm despite an early death, but takes a lot of damage from that Revenant. Off to the dual lane, we see a lot of minions pushing in to team full send. We're going to see potentially a good back here from them. Lots of minions pushing them under. We're going to see maybe some damage come out or a jump for that mid buff. But on the other side of the map, we've got Rampage coming in behind the Revenant. Revenant and Severog, though, duking it out a little bit. Severog does land the subjugate, right clicks out, and gets out of there. Grux now in there to help support the Revenant coming onto the Rampage. Rampage trying to pull him out, but Grux gets a pull oh, on nice. to pull Rampage. A lot of damage going out. Rampage might go down. Rampage does go down for the Revenant. Another kill to our off lane Revenant. Oh, that Bellica was, coming in for a rotation behind. Ooh, there is a good dodge from the Revenant there. A pull from the Grux. Bellica now half health. Mana drain drone out there. Subjugate lands on the Revenant. Revenant teleports out so he can get that kill. Still gets the kill on the Bellica and might get a fourth one as well on Severog. Very, very close and oh. double kill. Ooh, but does go down to the minions. Still, that is four kills for that Revenant, which is going to make him very strong going into the rest of this game. It looks like Sebrog did get credit for that kill, even though he did go down to the minions. So at least Sebrog is going to get um, a fairly hefty bounty for, for an early game bounty. <laughs> yeah, especially, I mean, he got all four kills before he went down. So that's a, a you're right. That's a good Sebrog bounty, keeping him potentially in this game a little bit. Rampage running through the mid lane. Wraith actually doing some damage there, trying to poke him out a little bit. But Bellica shows on in. Wraith is level six, but level six on Wraith doesn't really mean too much. It's just an invisibility. But we're going to see a lot of damage coming out of this Bellica when she hits that level six as well. Back to the duo lane. We see this Twin Blast pushing them in. Triple grenades going out. Steel knocking up Twin Blast and a shield coming through. Twin Blast dashes away, taking a lot of damage, but is still going to be able to get out of there for now. Ooh, Wraith coming in from the side lane. Very low Twin Blast. Twin Blast might not be able to make out it and does not. Murdoch gets the kill. But they might be able to take out this Muriel as well. And Steel knocks Muriel up into the air and double kill on the Murdoch. She is... was just deleted off the map. She just <laughs> melted right there. Holy crap. Absolutely. Uh, we see a prime that, spirit. That's the started. downside of Muriel. She's she's she seems to be the squishiest hero in this entire game. But a lot of that is due to her ultimate coming into the middle of a team fight. And it just places her wherever her ultimate was. So she's off. She often gets just chewed up by enemy teams. Absolutely. We see that there is a 2v4 going on here for this water spirit. Water spirit down to 1500 health. Rampage trying to stay in there. Belka coming from the other side, but Twin Blast running in as well, trying to get there for the fight as soon as possible. Water Spirit does go down. Belka executes the Murdoch with ease and precision. Wraith with no mana gun and struggled to get out of there, but does dodge the abilities very beautifully uh, with Belka and Twin Blast chasing him down. They do pick up that kill on the Wraith, however. We've now got Belka, Grux chasing down the Grux as well. Rampage, perfect rock into the Grux, takes out the Grux. Even this game out to six, to six on kills, but Water Spirit does indeed go to team full send. You love to see those Rampage Rock kills. You love to see it. Oh, absolutely. Let's check out this off lane once more. Revenant still just putting the pressure out on this Severog. Severog has to run out of there to survive, but Revenant's going to be able to push in the lane with relative ease. Back in the mid lane, we see the Bellica pushing up the lane now that she got some favor under her. She's still sitting at half mana, will be able to put out some pressure. Now is also a level up on the Wraith, despite being a level down a minute ago. Is now picked back up with those kills they picked up in the duo lane. Murdoch, though, chasing down off of this mana buff, trying to deal some damage from that bush while they're taking the mana buff, but does not get too much for it. Muriel, just over half health. Twin Blast still doing very well and picks up the mana buff for himself. Steel tried to come through the bushes to set up that, that bush gag. No, he's just going to stroll right into lane. He doesn't even care. And they're push, put, pushing into this tower. They do have the Prime Spirit right now, which is weakening this tower. So that tower is going to take even more damage than normal. Oh, oh man, oh, Revenant wow. picks up another kill. This Revenant is just so fed right now. They need to do something about him. Revenant actually took the tower. Did not get a kill there, but is getting jumped on oh, by the that. Rampage. He does ult the Rampage. Now, Steel and Severog going at it. Steel does tele take the teleporter across to help support the Revenant despite that. But Revenant still survives in the ultimate. Will potentially take out this Rampage. But Bellica, Bellica shows up from the mid lane. Grux shows up from the jungle. Grux picks Severog up the Rampage kill. Bellica Revenant. looking for that kill on Revenant. They try to take the portal. The portal's not available. Subjugate landing on the Revenant takes out Revenant. Bellica and Sev knocked into the air by Steel. They may pick up this Bellica kill here. Rux fighting it out. Mana Drone down as well. The Wraith picks up the mid lane kill from a rotation. Severog now going to struggle against 3v1 and gets knocked up into the air by Steel. Knocked back and will indeed go down. 
they were just playing volleyball with him for a second there. They had him knocked around all over the place. Absolutely. Very nice rotation. But we're going to now send. see a Prime Guardian underling as well be taken by this team. Despite they're on a ward, they're just taking the advantage of getting those three kills to take this Prime underling. Rampage coming from the mid lane to the right side. We may see him get here in time, but it'll be very close. About half health on this Prime underling. Grux and Wraith pushing it down together. Rampage showing up. Steel is now backed and coming through the base, but tel Twin Blast teleports. Oh. From the Prime Spirit Pit over to the Prime Underling Pit. Wraith is going to take oh, a lot of Grux damage from this Rampage. Muriel coming in with an ultimate beautiful knockup by the Muriel onto Grux and Steel. Rampage now in there. St Grux very low. Smites away the Prime Underling for health. And ooh, which team did it go to? It has not quite said yet. It does go to Team Pyro. Team Pyro being the second to engage on that. But a fight breaking out. Bellica now taking a lot of damage. Has to teleport out. Grux running away. Revenant still doing lots of damage in the background. Two kills for Revenant now so far. Now he's stunned or rooted that ramp rampage the rampage being in travel mode we're gonna see potentially two oh, more kills being picked up path. here dude Velika went the wrong direction that is three kills for revenant during this fight we're gonna see a fourth bushes, kill for revenant the during this fight and, and mid lane we now see the severog fighting with steel and wraith and severog does go down to steel five kills down but team pyro does pick up the prime underling i'm not sure who who grabbed it i'm not sure who picked it up in that fight but somebody's got it on him <laughs> Steel does go in with an ultimate there, trying to deal a little bit of damage to that Twin Blast. Twin Blast is safe under tower, and Muriel is able to shield him away from any further damage. Let's see if we can track down who on Team Pyro has picked up that Prime Orb, and it is the Rampage. Rampage is carrying the Prime Underling Orb. May look to drop it right here with the whole team backing. He does indeed. He drops it in the middle of the lane, pushes his minions away, but will get a full charge onto this mid lane tower with nobody content to contest at the moment. Bam, lots of damage onto the tower. Three members of the team pushing it down. They maybe will pick up this tower. Again, though, missing out on damage by not dropping it directly on top of the tower. Correct, Magus. And we're going to see some stuns coming out. They're trying to just negate some damage from the Prime Underling. Revenant, or Murdoch, kills the Twin Blast by coming from behind, but is going to take some damage and die himself to the Rampage. Rampage getting out of there very carefully. Wraith now having to run away. It's going to be... That was a trade one for one, but the tower does go down in the mid lane and some damage done to the inhibitor for Team Full Send. That hit inhibitor took about uh, about two thirds damage there. It looks like uh, it's actually something that's slightly deceptive on Paragon. The overprime is any damage done to the inhibitors lowers it by about a third. So we'll fly oh, on really? over there. We'll see there. It's a little under yeah, one tick. It's, just, it's not it quite two it thirds. <laughs> it's a little inhib tickle. Not much. But they but still, will have another that, opportunity for a, damage. Yep, they will have another opportunity for a prime underling later in this game. So they may be able to use that to their advantage. Prime Spirit is coming up soon. Steel trying to set up for it. Murdoch there as well. But it looks like Team Pyro is also trying to wait for the Prime Spirit to come up and group together. We've got full five man on the left side of the map for Team Full Send. Four people on the map, the left side or mid lane for Team Pyro. It looks like they're just repositioning right now. You got that. You got a little bit of a lull in every game where both teams don't quite know what to do. And there's no... Uh, there, there's no objectives on the map to take we do see a lot of wards down that that's what allowed that steal earlier for for, for 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 pyro was they had that ward down on the uh mini prime absolutely rampage does take half health and damage whoa we see a bellica go down almost seemingly randomly from the revenant revenant now caught out 2v1 right now but is very strong who does get out of there Lights a little away. bit hiding in the bush does get stuck by the rev the rampage but severog is there does not do a lot of damage the team coming in to help revenant get out of there and sure enough he does murdoch picks up the kill on the rampage now they're stuck between the team of pyro but twin blast half health severog half health muriel not doing a lot of damage it's going to be very hard for her to get in there and do anything water spirit has been started and Wraith teleporting to the right side of the map. Bellica has respawned as well. Twin Blast has to go back to base. This Prime Spirit is already below half health. This will go over to Team Full Send. It seems the Full Send knows that their win condition right now is Revenant. And uh, they're absolutely. doing everything they can to protect that Revenant. I mean, this Revenant's already got two items damage. at 9 to 2 in his KDA Mangus. Absolutely incredible gameplay from this Revenant. Doing very, very well for himself. Let's see what we've got on these teams making something happen. Grux running into his jungle a little bit below half health. We've got the duo lane still here. Wards everywhere on this map. I'm loving the ward coverage that we're seeing throughout this game, Mangus. It does hurt my little Paragon heart to see tanks just get bullied by ADCs in the off lane, but <laughs> it happens. It happens. There's the so way you much, counter though. that is your jungler. If your jungler is on top of it and that you have an ADC like Revenant that has no escape, the jungler should have been on top of him this entire match and just shutting him down. 
and we're seeing even now that the win condition of revenant is being played so effectively that the jungle is just giving him his farm just saying please get stronger we need you to be able to just take out the enemy team more so than you're already doing as well absolutely incredible work so far eat i want you fat <laughs> It looks like they're maneuvering around the solo lane a little bit. Got some pings on the map. Nice ward placement from full send. They got some deep wards going on. Those wards are picking up everybody, but the ward is finally down. And Revenant just continues to jungle. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to see on the left side of this map, we're going to see the duo lane starting to become pressured. We've got three members of Team Full Send over here while they're trying to just defend this tower. They know that this tower, they want it to go down, but right lane's getting pushed in heavily by Revenant. Severog's got to go deal with that. Revenant may be able to teleport across. He's just going to take the enemy jungle now. We're just going to see a fight potentially break out here. Oh, we've got Bellica doing some work, taking some, a lot of damage out on the Wraith, but they're able to back out a little bit here. Grux is on his way from the mid lane but may not be able to make anything happen. A good dissuade of the fight here from Team Pyro. And Rampage did have to use his ult right there, but uh, was not effective. We got Grux waiting in the wings. I've been expecting Grux to, to do a lot, and he has done a lot in this game. I mean, he's he's been saving people left and right. I'm sure we're going to see him um, be uh, very productive towards the late game whenever they're fighting under those towers, and he's pulling everybody into him while tanking tower shots. That seems to be how Grux is played in, the, in these competitive games. Absolutely, and we're going to see this tower being potentially pushed down from Team Full Send, but maybe in the mid lane we're going to see something go down here as well. Revenant gets the perfect subjugate landed on him. Revenant taking half health. They're putting out a lot of damage on this Revenant. Revenant does want to take out the Velika as quickly as possible. Does get the kill, but goes down himself. Muriel coming in for the ultimate on the Grux. Grux is going to take a lot of damage now as well. Severog, Rampage, and Muriel in the mid lane. Their damage is now missing though. Velika going down is going to be a big problem. Grux landing a beautiful pull, but taking a lot of damage in the meantime. And Wraith will go down. Grux very, very low. Steel now in there, but 4v1 Steel is going to have a very hard time. Team Pyro is doing a great job of manipulating these maps and these fights They're rallying into their up. favor. They're rallying up. I like it. Uh, now. I also like the, the decision of that Revenant. He knew he was dead, so he just went ahead and tried to at least get a kill out of it, and he did. So he maximized his death. Uh, absolutely. We're like now going to see... Mini prime? Yep, a mini prime coming through from these teams. And this is... Pyro could use this to push down an inhibitor, so this is absolutely a favored fight that Pyro wants to take in this game. See, it looks like it's going to be completely... Oh, no, it's not completely uncontested, but they do get it. And they get a kill out of the deal as well. And as Grux, Grux goes down goes to down. I mean, for the favor that uh, Team Full Send had put up early in the game, they're slowly losing it by losing both of those mini primes. That's going to be a lot of damage put out on, the, on their towers. That is going to be really hard to contest. And they are zeroed in on this Revenant now, like... That fight in mid lane, whenever they took out Revenant, the rest of the team went down so easy. If they can just take Revenant out of these fights, somehow they're, they're definitely going to have a huge advantage in the team fights because Full Send is investing so much into this Revenant. Absolutely. Revenant is just absolutely dominating this game. 103 minions. Oh, they dropped it on the left lane. I'm trying to get over there. Let's go. All right, drop the <laughs> mini prime on the left lane, and that will take a lot of damage down on the tower. Revenant gets a kill on the Bellica. Absolutely the dominating this down. game. The Revenant is in his ultimate here. We're going to see him pop up here in just another moment. Gets a kill onto Twin Blast. Very, very low, though. Getting chased out by the Muriel, and the Rampage and Severog are also trying to get in there. They want that Revenant to go down. They want that gold bounty from him. But Revenant will be able to walk out a little free, but just still played it very close with that Twin Blast fight in his ultimate. They're still chasing him a little bit. They're still looking for him. <laughs> they want that Revenant bad. <laughs> Revenant's still running away, trying to get to safety. Severog chasing him down. Prime Spirit has now come back up. I do think that that mini Prime, uh, that Prime Underling was actually a little bit of a waste, Mangoose, that they just dropped it in the side lane there. 
very shortly after they took it they had plenty of time to still set up for a good push in the mid lane or something else they did get this tower in the left lane or in the duo lane but i feel like they could have definitely received a lot more for that i think they could have gotten an inhibitor out of that if they would have played it right i completely agree now we've got wards dropped on here he's getting skills getting stuck behind Severog. it has to jump out of there this it could turn into another team fight here 4v4 already on the map revenant across the map so 5v4 <laughs> now with muriel alt in play where revenant's not anywhere nearby and that's a good chunk of full sense damage we got double wards on the map right now in the same location love to see the uh the over warding <laughs> All right, chat. Give me just a moment. I'm going to put these names on screen for us for both of these teams. Full Prime, the big prime, has shown up as well. We're going to see these come across. All right. Give me Looks like a little bit of a mid lane fight. They're trying to push in this uh, duo lane and try and take a tower off of Pyro. Absolutely. The team Full Send on the no left, attack. Team Pyro on the right, everybody. There we go. We're back into the game. Let's see what's going on here. There is a Prime Spirit up for grabs here. We've got, ooh, Murdoch getting caught out right here. We're gonna see him get pushed back. Lots of damage coming out from the Twin Blast. This is a 3v4. Murdoch does go down to the Twin Blast. Lots of damage put out from Team Pyro, but not too much coming from that Murdoch. Steel has to back out now. Revenant now caught on the wrong side of the jungle, hanging out in that bush, but does have to run away. We're gonna see a potential team fight come out here. Grux fighting it out in the middle there with Rampage and Severog, but still not a ton of damage coming out there. Revenant is chasing around this Bellica. Oh, does a half health shot on that Bellica. Absolutely Ooh, that had to that insane. Fourth shot out, of the, out of the pistol, man. Holy crap, that just deleted her. Grux has to get out now, but Revenant picked up another kill. Murdoch is back on the map as well. Twin Blast very low. We could see a Murdoch come, like, coming from the far side of the map. Muriel has to ult in there. And oh, he gets rewound. Goes back, does die. Muriel taking a lot of damage from the Revenant. Revenant getting to take out the Muriel. A Wraith takes out the Muriel with a good knock knock. Now Revenant taking out the damage on the Rampage. Rampage goes down. They still don't have so a tower in that duo lane out. though, so they can't just push up. They have to go <laughs> back and take these towers. But Team Full Send doing a very, very good job there of taking Revenant out. Revenant doing lots and lots of work. Lots and lots, and lots of work right there. Oh, what is happening over here? They're still pushing up. Severog, very, very strong, trying to push in there. Steel taking a lot of damage. Wraith has to get out of there. Steel is able to queue out, but Bellica is still nearby. Bellica might be able to take him out. Subjugate misses. Does nice land. Ooh, does go down there. Good subjugate from Severog. Able to take out the steel because they overstayed in that duel lane. Again, no minions on that tower. And that tower still alive. Means it's going to be very difficult. They do manage to take the fire spirit, however. Rux gonna get caught out on his jungle camps over here by the Muriel and the Twin Blast. Goes down to Twin Blast. We're starting to see a complete turnaround, but that Revenant is still an absolute beast. Absolutely. Um, Revenant doing lots and lots of damage. 13 and 3 with 120 minions. About to take this red buff as well. I think we're seeing better teamwork from Pyro Blast, from, from, from Pyro, but uh, um, Full Sin's Revenant is just so, so dangerous right now. It's going to come Absolutely. down to if, if they can isolate him and take him out early. Yeah, if they get and another then, fight like they had earlier in the mid lane where they picked off Revenant, I mean, that could be a beautiful fight for Team Pyro right now. Both teams kind of resetting, setting some wards up around the mini prime. Or actually, that's full prime now that we're yep. after 20 minutes. We are seeing the full prime. Now, the duo lane for Team Full Send needs to go down. They need to remove these towers off of the map. Team Pyro has two towers to Full Send's one tower. They picked up the mana buff on the side of the lane. Murdoch just kind of getting held back there, not being able to do too much on the map. We're seeing a little bit of a lull while everyone's not quite sure what they're trying to do. Full Send needs to be pushing for these towers while Team Pyro needs to let them take towers in, a, in return for other objectives. They can team it looks Ooh, like Rampage is in a lot of danger. Revenant ults up on him after he did a shitload of damage. And Revenant does get the kill on the Rampage while he's in his little alternate universe. And does a lot of damage while taking very, very little. Severog going to get chased out now in this jungle. We may see a full team fight break out. No, Severog's able to get away without any issue, but they are rotating onto the full prime. Now, one member down. It is a dangerous proposition, especially being the it jungler. It is warded. It is warded. A lot of damage prime. already going it, out onto it, this full prime. 
The it's been nerfed, but it's still fairly dangerous to try and take. And it looks like Pyro, Pyro is rotating over. It's going to be point. very close with the health pool of this Will mini it be prime. Too late? They do have a smite, however, on Team Full Send side, and oh, they, they will take it, which is a lot of damage. Going to go right out to the enemy team. Boom. Murdoch takes out Bellica with a full laser. Murdoch does get a lot of damage out because he grabbed that prime. Muriel coming in with an ultimate does get rewound on the twin blast. Muriel might be able to save him there, but Grox lands a beautiful ultimate. A good pull on to Severog. Steel lands an ultimate on the twin blast, and Muriel. Muriel does go, or twin blast goes down. Muriel now going down, and Severog going to go down very shortly thereafter. Now Rampage. that decision right there, they, they chased the Revenant instead of going into the Prime Pit. I'm not sure if that was the smart thing to do because when that Prime goes down, everybody takes so much damage. Absolutely, yeah. It's a, The first Prime is 20% damage automatically to your health bar. And that is a lot of damage to take during a team fight just across your entire team. Rampage, or Grux now able to push in that right lane for free effectively while his whole team comes up behind him. They will take this right inhibitor most likely. You do see Belica coming through, but Belica does not have enough damage for everybody. She takes out the Wraith. She will go down, however, to the Murdoch, Grux, and Steel, but there's still a lot of damage left, and they will take that right inhibitor after all. Good kill, good kill on the Wraith, but yeah, that I, I probably would have just abandoned that inhib at that point. I, I completely agree with you, Mangoose. 31 to 20. No objectives on the map currently other than the towers, and that is a good lane to have the inhibitor in as well because the tower is still up for Team Full Send in that lane. So yeah. Pyro is going to have to be on top of this lane now. Just Poor little announcer still trying to catch up off of everything that's going on throughout this match. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to do an honest announcer overview because that thing <laughs> cracks me up so much. We're seeing... It announces the smallest things with such enthusiasm. <laughs> MVP announcer right there, Mangus. Absolutely. <laughs> Red buff has spawned <laughs> in the battlefield. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Okay. We're seeing, seeing Team Pyro maybe prioritize this left lane now. Uh, they quickly grab that. Uh, Twin Blast is going to teleport across instead of taking that tower. We need to get these towers off of the map. Yeah, team Full Send has finally taken all three towers from away from Pyro. Pyro had an opportunity for a free tower there and didn't take it. Revenant is going to get another kill diving the inhibitor, no less. He's going to be able to get out of there as well with half of his health. Subjugate misses on that Revenant. Now we're going to see a team fight break out. Grox lands a beautiful pull on Bellica from the top right there. Right off the ledge. Right off the ledge. I love to see it. I love to see it. Which is going to be really difficult for them to come back from. Bellica is a lot of their damage on Team Pyro. Pyro is going to be very struggling right now. They don't have minions in that mid lane in order to take the mid inhibitor, but it's still going to be a lot of damage that they're putting out there. Trying to clear these minions out. Trying to keep the pressure on with two dead on Team Pyro's side. The full, they're going to full send it. He's just going to tank those tower shots. A lot of that, a lot of people don't realize that the, the inhibs late game. You can tank a lot of those shots. Uh, you don't really need the minions that much. Absolutely. Several are trying to step up there, but taking a ton of damage from that revenant. Murdoch nice tosses out shield. an ultimate as well. Looks like they're just trying to clear minions at this point. Ooh, Revenant does step up. It takes, again, a chunk out of Severog's health bar. Revenant is absolutely doing fantastic. Four full items, 15 to four. And he does have the... What is this item called? Treasured Sword of the Kingdom, which increases his critical damage. And the critical damage is already nuts in this game. You increase it even more. Oof. Oof. Absolutely. They're going to take this. Uh, they're going to kick the deer. They're going to get, get him a red deer. They're going to give him a little bit of offensive <laughs> power. I think uh, that one was worth probably a buck, buck 50 mangoose. <laughs> All right, we're seeing Severog chase them into the jungle for some reason. I think that was a very dangerous move without the rest of his <laughs> yeah. team behind him. That easily could have gone south for that Severog, but Fire Spirit does go over to Team Full Send. That is four spirits. We've got two waters and two fires for Team Full Send on those spirits. And that's, a, I mean, those are stackable buffs. That's 8% physical and magical power and 4% of health and mana regen every five seconds. That's a lot of pressure that they're able to exert now for longer because of those buffs that they're getting. Well, we're seeing right now we saw too many primes from Pyro, but we've seen several water sp or uh, or prime spirits from Full Send. And I think the prime spirits at this point in the game are far more uh, far more effective. If you can't make anything happen with those mini primes, then definitely prime spirit is far more effective late game. Absolutely, not being able to open up those inhibitors with their mini prime, the second uh, prime underling that they got. I think is a big detriment to Pyro right now. They did not, they weren't able to create that pressure on the map for Team Full Send to have to pay attention to mid lane. 
that they were able to just make pressure happen everywhere else on the map and then push Pyro out of their lead. Got Severog kind of hanging out in the shadow well. I don't know what he's doing right there. <laughs> Severog is potentially going to get caught out a little bit here, trying to make something happen there, but does get chased out. We're going to see the Revenant just putting out damage. The, the manager... Oh, Revenant's getting caught out, though. He has to ult somebody to get out of there. He ults the Bellica. This fight is breaking out. He does take out the he Bellica. Does win the fight. But it's going to be very close. He has to drop out the right side. Half health on that Revenant. Severog, very low. Half health as well. Now, this fight is taking a turn. Grux goes in, is able to land that ultimate. Muriel going down. Big Grux, ooh, twin steel. blast, very, very low. And Revenant's back in the fight, takes out that rampage. This is going to be very difficult. Minions are pushing up in the right lane. They're just chasing it all down. They don't care. Five members. <laughs> five members dead on Team oh, Pyro. Grux is, go is trying to tank damage. Will oh, he go yeah. down? He oh, survives. Oh, oh, so Absolutely close, so incredible. Close. Steel oh, doing the same steel. thing. Minions pushing in 80% on that core. This could be the end of the game, Mangu. Six, six oh, seconds. Dude, you can't, you can't tank that core, buddy. You can't tank that core. He does, he does run out of it. They do have minions now. They got Revenant on the core. He's gonna be chunking that, that thing. Oof, he's doing almost a, a, uh, a, a tick per shot. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and that, and that will is going to be a beat win the for game. Bullshit. Holy crap! So in-game analysis here <laughs> i think what went wrong for pyro they didn't make good enough use of the uh mini prime whenever they had it and i think they did not gank the crap out of that revenant early game as they probably should have i agree once that revenant got four kills in the early game they should have been focused on keeping him down as much as possible but every time they went over there they, i mean and that also is full credit to full send as well every time that the team pyro went over to take out that revenant Full send was right there behind him. We had the Wraith coming from the mid lane. We had Steel teleporting from this the duo lane to make sure that Revenant stayed alive and got more kills. And they did just that. I mean, 18 and 4, absolutely dominating this game. We'll look at the graphs here real quick as well. Damage dealt the heroes, 40,000. Almost two times anybody else in the game on that Revenant. And it showed every fight he was in, he absolutely destroyed the enemy team. And Blue Dynamite in chat brings up a great point. The game was decided when Pyro was trying to chase after Rev while Full Send was taking out Prime. 100%. That was a poor decision on Pyro's part. I know that that Rev was a thorn in their side and they wanted <laughs> to take him out of the fight. But when they're attacking Prime right right there and the Prime was already so low, they could have they could have smited that away. They could have just taken it with abilities. Something could have happened to help them turn that fight around. And with Rev, if Rev would have taken 20% damage, if they would have taken stolen that prime and then they could have taken him out then but no they decided to go ahead and chase after that revenant and um i think that kind that really lost them the game that was the that was when things really turned around it looked like pyro was was starting to rally up until that point after that point that kind of broke their spirit <laughs> oh saw that coming a mile away <laughs> All right, and then the second two bands are Muriel and Narbash. So we've got two support bands out there. The, of course, of course, the Revenant band came through. No terrible surprise there from us. So let's see what they pick instead. Let's see what they go. I want to see what full send goes for offlane now that they don't have a Revenant. Are they going to go Sparrow? Is that what they're going to do? So, I mean, we saw the Feng Mao band last game, but the Feng Mao band came through perfectly on this one. Muriel is banned instead as well of the narbash and muriel are banned so we're gonna see steel probably and decker on the other team there it is bam as we see it grux actually goes to team pyro this time so it's going to be much harder for the gank assist to happen but feng mao is a very strong duelist as well so this could be a very interesting game this bellica on pyro was very dangerous last game and she's gotten bellica once again Yes, absolutely. Bellica, Bellica was probably the strongest member of the team last time around. And so we could easily see a run back of that similar strength. The Wraith also gets picked. Twin Blast gets picked by Full Send this time instead of Murdoch. This is going to be a very interesting game to watch, Mangus, now that everything has switched up and the Revenant offlane doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> now, who do you prefer between Murdoch and Twin Blast? Who do you prefer, Jelly? Oof, I mean, prefer to play Twin Blast. Twin Blast is so much fun. I love his right click, being able to put some damage out. I think that Murdoch has a little bit more strength comparatively to Twin Blast with his Q rockets doing a lot of damage, his ability to send people backwards with his shield bash. I think there's a lot of strength there. 
Honestly, I could see it being a 50-50 between the two based on pure skill alone. What about you, Mangus? I, I personally prefer to play Twist. If I do play ADC, that's my top pick. That's my top choice. He's just fun to play. So interesting play here. We actually saw the ward go out from Decker on this left lane in the duo side. And then she went back to base. I wonder if she was trying to pick up another ward that she got enough gold or what happened there. But she did go straight back to base after placing that ward. Elika gets a good ward in the mid lane as well. We're not seeing any invades come through. We're just going to see some good old fashioned gameplay. Now, we, we, we've got two very good team compositions here. Um, I think Full Send edges it out, out a little bit for late game because they do have that steal. They do have that Fing Mao, who is always so freaking dangerous late game. Just a few items on Fing Mao, and he's damn near unkillable. Yeah, absolutely. And then, honestly, if we look at this duo lane right now, we've got the Twin Blast versus the Rampage. Another great ADC off lane that we're seeing in this game. Oh, whoa, I need to go to the mid lane. Okay, we've got a very early gank from the Feng Mao. Level two on Roth. Roth has to po or use their teleport to get out of there. Feng Mao now entering the enemy jungle. That was a very good gank. Gets a lot of the the escape potential of Bellica out of the way very early on in this game. So I was expecting Wraith to go off lane and Twin Blast to go duo, but uh, looks like we got a reversal of fortune here. <laughs> Even though Muriel no, was banned. I was going to say, out. Muriel's banned this game, man. You can't have a reversal of fortune in here. Absolutely. I mean, I think that two hands on the ADC offlane showed his dominance and his potential at the last game with the Revenant. And if he said, let me do that again, but just on Twin Blast this time, I think that that's something you have to respect as his team. And then you pick up Wraith over something like Sparrow, who's a little bit more late game scaling. Uh, Nimes XO, Narbash, really worth a ban. I do believe so. His early game is strong, and his late game is also strong once he gets a few tank items on him. Uh, his healing is insane, and you can't kill him. And he's just a, a big a big body blocker that's healing everybody around him and that just cannot die. Yep. So I think Narbash is worth a ban. Rux heading into that dual lane does is only level 2, so he's going to struggle being able to put any kind of damage out. Blink! Coming out of the Wraith, Wraith does manage to get out of there. He played just in time. Oh, just we, in time, because that was about to hit. Steel walks right into the bush, scaring out the Grux again. Let's see. Decker throwing down the slow bubbles and just trying to check the bush. At this point, it feels like Steel's just trying to bait them in by backing in these bushes. They know he's still there. Sure enough, Decker gets a root onto the Steel there. No big deal. We're going to go check out this mid lane with Howitzer and Bellica. Howitzer doing really well. Bellica was forced to back. She was a little bit low health. Howitzer now pushing the lane in as well, trying to make something happen. But if we look at the Rev or the Rampage, Rampage taking a lot of damage from this Twin Blast. Twin Blast also doing a lot of tower damage as well. Lots of minions still under here. Twin Blast going to be able to do a lot of damage. Feng Mao getting chased down by the Grux in the jungle as well. That Rampage, I'm not sure what he was doing there. He should have jumped in front of that tower to make Twin Blast hit him instead of the tower and then stunned him once Twin Blast was taking the tower shots. I think that was the play there from Rampage. I completely agree. He had the mana for it. He could have right clicked and then threw his rock for the stun and I think absolutely done really well there as well. Feng Mao jumping in, taking, trying to take this Grux for his lunch money, stealing this red buff away from him potentially. They're fighting it out. This is going to just be a slap fight for a little bit. Grux smites away the red buff for some health and gets the red buff. Now Bellica, now nearby. Feng Mao going to really struggle to get out of here. Bellica yeah, knocks him up and takes the kill. First blood goes to Team Pyro. I'm amazed we're four minutes in and we're just now getting first blood. Absolutely. And it was all, definitely off a of mistake from Feng Miao. He, um... He didn't have anybody rotating to help him out. Uh, I think he thought that he was probably a little stronger against Grux than he was, but that Ooh, Grux we see might. Twin Blast actually going down to the Grux Rampage in the duel lane. Very close death from the Rampage, or very close escape from death for the Rampage, but Twin Blast goes down with Grux and him working together. A lot of damage went on to that duel lane tower from the Murdoch and Decker as well. Let's see if we can make something up, make something happen here. Rampage probably going to push this lane in and leave. He needs to. Feng Mao coming in very Feng quickly. Have a Ooh, leap. He does he's... have a leap. Is it enough? Feng Mao dives Ooh, into Feng the Mao tower. Does oh, not he has quite to get away. it. Feng Mao takes a lot of damage there. Grux is Rampage backing as well. Really well. Yeah, Rampage did fantastic there. And Grux was backing as well. So unable to go pick up that kill on the Feng Mao Howitzer. Pushing Bellica in. Bellica got a kill though. So this is definitely in the favor of Team Pyro at the moment. 
Dual lane getting pushed in. Wraith going to have a hard time keeping up with minions in this dual lane. Let's see if Wraith is going Wraith is going the crit basic attack build instead of a magical damage build for the carry roll. And it seems the Pyro has learned their lesson with that Grux rotating over to take out that Twin Blast. I want to see him harass that Twin Blast even more, though. I don't want to see that Twin Blast get as fed as that Revenant did last game. Because I personally, I think a fed Twin Blast is a little more dangerous than a fed Revenant. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I completely agree. Ooh, getting rooted is a very bad thing for the Grux there. Grux gets the pull button. How it's hit level six, able to dump all of those missiles down onto the mid lane, pushing in there. Oh, Ooh, gets the perfect lock the back and back. will. The bounce back from Howitzer, and he secures the kill. Well-placed mine from Howitzer. That Grux took all of that ultimate damage. I don't know why he didn't slip out to the side, but uh, he just, he, he almost, he thought he was out of it. He thought he was away, and that mine <laughs> placed perfectly, bounces him back in. Howitzer secures that kill. You'll love to see it. Absolutely. Every time he thinks he's out, Mangoose, they pull him right back in, and it was just <laughs> beautiful to see Probably one of the best howitzer mines I've seen thus far in Paragon the Overprime. Perfectly executing that kill, stealing the Grux away, getting the first kill for Team Full Send. And onward we go. Team Full Send did just win, but this is a best of three because it is the semifinals. And it looks like Pyro has adjusted well to their loss. I think they're I think they're playing a little better this game than they were the last game at, at this point. Uh, they rallied sort of mid-game last time, but it looks like they're uh, they're doing really well this time. I, still, I really want to see this Twin Blast is pushed so far forward past mid. I want to see this jungler come in and punish him hard for that before he can go. He can Ooh, we got a line. rewind on the Grux that will just end that gank very, very quickly. But we're going to jump over to the dual lane where Twin Blast is just dominating this rampage. Just pushing him in. Again, a tank character into an ADC is just not favorable for them right now. And it's letting Twin Blast get a lot of favor in this lane. Twin Blast actually may be able to take the tower here if Grux decides to back out. But Twin Blast will play a little bit safer. Doesn't know where the enemy jungler is. Will to go take the green health buff on the side lane. Yeah, poor Rampage. There's not a lot he could do. I mean, you think, well, he could just leap into him. Well, Twin Blast is just going to dive away if he leaps into him. You got to land that rock perfectly if you're going to if you're going to successfully defend against that Twin Blast. And that Twin Blast is going to be pinging you down the entire time. Grux finds Feng Miao in the bush. I don't think he expected to find him. and takes quite a bit of damage from Feng Miao. Feng Miao does have the red buff. Absolutely. We saw a good rotation over from Howitzer, but wasn't able to make anything happen. Bellica now fighting the Howitzer, doing a lot of damage. Twin Blast able to take the right tower. Bellica getting knocked around a little bit, but is forced away from her tower by the ultimate with Howitzer. Now they've traded positions, but Bellica has to teleport back to her lane. May be taking a lot of damage. Feng Mao might be able to go into the execute, he's but does not have level six yet. This will be very bad for Feng Mao, but he makes it. Oh, got it. Howitzer, oh, Feng Mao. Very, very low. Steel actually goes down in the duo lane during that fight that the Decker and Murdoch were able to make something happen. But Twin Blast now here for the counter gank. Let's see if something happens through that portal. They're going to have no escape potential now. Stuck between two ADCs and a hard place. Let's see but what's going to go down. Their damage. Their damage. They need to team up on one, not, not both. Uh, I completely agree. It feels like that was a wasted opportunity. They had Trouble both of them below damage. half health. Unfortunately, yeah, he was not caged in. He blinked out. Unfortunately, not able to pick up a kill there, despite them having every opportunity to do so. Yeah, that that was just a that was just a poor coordination right there. Each one took a different person and tried to kill them, and they got neither. <laughs> Looks like <laughs> they're going they are to, to kick the deer. Work on the prime spirit. I welcome this play. I think it's a perfect play for them right now. Well, uh, they did pick up uh, Grox on the ward. They did not want to risk it getting stolen away from them. Um, now that they've been been seen and it's been reset, I think that they probably should just leave it alone. But Rampage coming in, along with a full rotate. This is going to be a full team fight. We just got one from full set, still in the mid lane. Still charging through this fight. Rampage is ulted up, dealing that AOE damage. Fang and they do get the kill. Going down. Now. Elica very low. Twin Blast is now there providing the damage. Water Spirit has reset. There is no damage on the Water Spirit now. Steel able to go in there, but Steel is not level 6. Steel does not have enough damage or translation into damage with his Twin ultimate yet. Ooh, Wraith gonna go. Ooh, Wraith gets out of there just barely. Twin Blast able to pick up another kill. This two hands absolutely dominating these games as the carry picks. Uh, we're gonna see everybody, four members go down, all four of which going to two hands. Quadra kill on the map for full send it still did pick up his ultimate mid fight and used it to great effect to take to take down uh bellica there 
Very nicely done. Two hands. I wonder if that's a reference to the Rebby two hands from Black Lagoon. <laughs> But they're looking now for the mini prime. They're going to go on the underling. 7,000 health left, but it's going to be very difficult. Four members of the other team spawning right now. Rampage and Grux are coming in, trying to keep them off of this prime underling. They don't have a lot of damage now. Twin Blast is going to have to force these people off of the map, get them out of the pit. But Wraith now coming in. Wraith now rewinds. Grux, Grux going right back in front of them. Steel trying to play keep away. 3,000 health on the prime underling. Grux coming in to try and steal that away from them. Steel very low. Feng Mao very low. We've got a lot of damage coming in. Grux goes down. Prime Underling goes down. Who picked it up? It looks like it's going to be Bellica picking up a kill. But the uh, announcer is taking his sweet old time. There we go. Team Full Send picking up the Prime Underling, but losing three members in the process. Twin Blast also receiving his second death, which is a lot of shutdown gold to Team Pyro. Now let's see if Full Send, full send never did get... Uh, a mini prime in the uh the, the first game let's see how they use it as opposed to how pyro used it let's see if we can find out who picked up that prime as well it looks like it is <laughs> oh, on the feng mao feng mao will be the one to take care of business with that Must prime be able to it away that was a very close prime underling they i mean they did lose members but they picked up the prime underling so it's one of those it's almost an even trade if they can use the prime underling well and receive something for it Full send with all of their towers still up on the map. Team Pyro losing the tower in the off lane at the moment, but still has the duo and mid lane towers. We could definitely see Feng Mao take this to the right lane and potentially push down an inhibitor, or because it's the first one, we will have another one. There is the potential he uses it to take a mid or left tower and then uses the second one for an inhib take. We're seeing the team group up. They know Feng Mao is probably carrying that prime underling they want to be there if he decides to drop it but it looks like he's heading toward the left lane twin blast pushes out the right lane rampage has to go answer that or else they're going to lose some inhibitor health and sure enough there is the prime underling spawn again missing out on the damage from the prime underling unfortunately it's really unfortunate to see that free damage just go away they're not able to take a lot with that because they don't have it but they get the tower nevertheless a rewind going out on murdoch murdoch does get pushed to safety because of it despite all the full sense team being nearby grux coming in trying to take out that wraith but gets knocked up into the air. Steel. Rampage teleports across from the right lane to the left lane. Now Rampage, Rampage is being is caught out. Damage and running through. Feng Mao, actually, though, being fought up here. 3v1. And they are not able to do anything. Wraith goes down from the Grux. Howitzer ult coming out there. Does, ooh, Grux. Very low. Grux does make it out. Feng Mao goes down to the other members of Team Pyro in the background. Rampage disengaging. Twin Blast. Not there and doesn't take anything else on the map, unfortunately. But this fight is continuing. Team Pyro decides to go back in. A knockup comes through from Steel. Steel is able Steel to get Bellica to, to blink out. As possible. Absolutely insane fight here. Twin Blast running around Rampage hiding in this bush. Does Twin Blast know he does not? He's just going to take this blue buff, get a shield and mana return for himself. But Murdoch's not going to let him take it for free. Murdoch's trying to push him out of there while Decker is also trying to keep him stunned out. The stun does connect from a mile wide. Decker, beautiful, beautiful stun. Prime Spirit back up as well. And only two and a half minutes to the next Prime Underling. With the exception of that quadra kill from Twin Blast in the, in the early parts of this game, um, these team fights have been far more evenly matched than in the first game. Absolutely, and I think it's because they're splitting their damage. The team full send is not putting their damage out onto the same person. They're splitting their damage among... We saw the Decker and Murdoch earlier. With that time, we saw the Grux and Rampage. They need to be more focused in who they're fighting, and they need to fight around their Twin Blast, who is very, very fed here. Howitzer's getting picked off in the mid lane. Has to use a mine to get out of there, but it keeps himself rooted. Ooh, barely, barely is getting out of there alive. Bellica now trying to put something out there. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to get anything done. We do have a disconnect, however, on Team, on team Full Send from Feng Mao. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Uh -oh. we're, going to we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, I'm not sure if the officials on the match are going to call something here. We're going to see what's going on. That's unfortunate. Under Especially your Feng Mao. You don't want your Feng Mao being out of the game. 
So this could turn turn around quite quickly, especially if full send starts to focus up. Starts to focus up on one target. I'm very impressed with this howitzer throughout this match. He's been using his boot mines extremely effectively, both defensively and offensively. Absolutely. He honestly, in all honesty, should have been dead in that fight where he just got caught out in the mid lane. But his mine was the thing that pushed him over the edge and the saved his life, as well as his team being nearby to help disengage him out of that fight. But we're going to see it's, nothing's really happening on the map right now. No prime spirits are being set up for it. Doesn't look like maybe they'll go for it here with the dual lane being pushed up a little bit. Mid lane still open for them to take the tower. No towers down on full send. We're going to have to wait and see what's happening. Water spirit is being started by team full send as well. Doesn't look like there's going to be any contest coming in from team pyro though. This contributed a lot of Full Sin's win last time, was they were, they were able to kick this deer repeatedly. Grunt's trying to come in for the steal, but he just comes in for a Howitzer ult all over his face. Rains down destruction. Rampage ulted up, trying to jump in and make something happen. Again, we see these Rampages ulting up and diving into enemy teams to, to very little effect throughout this an, entire tournament so far. Containment Fence comes down to keep them in check. Are they going to escape? Decker being very elusive with her jumps. And Full Send again is splitting their damage up. They need to they need to fo find one target focus. They need, somebody needs to make the call. Somebody on their team needs to make Ooh. the call because they are now getting absolutely deleted. Yeah, and actually that was 100% their damage being split is nice. the thing that lost them that fight. Twin Blast was never fighting the same target. Murdoch was able to just nice. run behind them, behind them and just deal damage to all of their tanks without basically any repercussions. They do pick up the Prime Spirit there but at the cost of their entire team. And that is definitely, definitely not worth it. Uh, it depends. Will Pyro take advantage of this of this full team wipe to make something happen? Uh, Feng Miao is back into the match. He's back, at, back into fighting. We don't see the Decker and Murdoch actually pushing up that lane. They had full priority to take that tower down since they had, knew the enemy team was all dead and they just left the tower there. The tower will remain up for now. This is the thing we saw Pyro doing last game is that they would take it. They would get an advantage by killing a chunk of the enemy team and then do nothing with it. They didn't get a mid tower. They didn't get the duo lane tower. They didn't get the right lane tower. They didn't pick up the mini prime or set up for it. They didn't get the prime spirit. Like the, yes, you got five kills, but do something with your momentum there. Don't just let it evaporate because you don't know where to go or what to push. Got to set up on mini prime. Pyro trying to take it down. Full send got the last one. Let's see if Pyro can get this one. We got a rotate steel coming through the portal. Steel's not going to be able to do a whole hell of a lot. They... Oh, two hands. <laughs> yeah. Just absolutely walking into all five members of the enemy team. But, I mean, he's able to pick a lot of people off. Steel coming in now to support him in there. The team is able to shield him. He's getting the shield from that fanatic dessert. He does go down, but after he's able to take out one member of the other nice. team. Howitzer ult Howitzer from ult. the prime pit. Beautiful, beautiful Howitzer ult. Prime underling now down to half health. Three members down on team full send, though. Four members down on team full send. Howitzer is the only one left. This is probably going to go very south for team does full get send. In, but he does blink away. This Howitzer has been doing absolutely amazing. Picks up another kill. Wow, absolutely away. incredible. But still, Grux still, is this still on the prime underling will it. pick it up and now potentially go take out this Howitzer. But he doesn't need to. They secured the prime underling. That's the biggest thing. Rampage is now going to go down to this Feng Mao potentially because Feng Mao was able to respawn and get back involved in this game. A we'll very, very dirty fight. That that yeah. nothing about that fight was clean. Nobody did anything well. It seemed like it was just kind of all over the place. Twin Blast getting caught out, getting an early kill, but still managing to go down, being most of Full Send's damage is gonna be a problem. Feng Mao does pick up the rampage kill, but Feng Mao is now fighting in the jungle pit here. Has to port out Ooh, Wraith getting picked up, but rewound is the Grux. Feng Mao trying desperately to get out of there. Bellica chasing them down. Bellica picks up the Howitzer trying to get a kill here. We've got two fights going on. Bellica will be very low. Go down to the Feng Mao. The pick goes off on the rate from Grux and Decker. The Grux now trying to fight the Feng Mao with Decker on his side. Feng Mao has no mana. We've also got the Murdoch now in tow. Feng Mao is going to go down very, very quickly. Twin Blast now just now showing up to the fight on the right side. It may be too late. A Prime gets dropped for the Steel's damage. That actually was a decent prime underling drop, but he's going to take a lot of damage in the meantime. Grox needs to get out of this fight. Murdoch needs to get out of this fight. They need to make towers happen. Decker takes out the howitzer in the jungle while Twin Blast prime picks up. Uncontested on this tower right now. Murdoch. Um, it should be noted that if you die and you have that that mini prime buff, you retain it. You keep it. But 
I think it was a good idea to drop it in that fight just now, just so that it does get dropped and does get some value, and it does get a tower. Uh, absolutely. The tower did not go down, however. That tower is still standing Whoa, after the mini down? I thought it got a tower. Nope. The tower, it attacked the tower, but did not manage to get the full kill. Twin Blast. Running into the jungle, being very, very greedy here. This is a dangerous place for Twin Blast to be without knowing where the enemy team is. But it looks like he may get out anyway. Yeah, I mean, that was, again, a very dirty fight, Mangoose, that did not really seem coordinated well on any fronts. Um, the it best, just... thing, best part about that fight was Howie ulting out of the prime pit. That was, that was <laughs> really cool. But we might see something come down. That was the second prime underling. Nothing really came of it. Pyro still has no towers for their team. It's a very unfortunate thing that Pyro has now had two advantages with that tower to take towers and has not yeah, used either one. If Full Sin would consolidate their damage on one hero at a time, they would be running away with, the, with, with this game right now. Yeah. But that's what's keeping Pyro in. It, it's not that Pyro is making great plays. They have been making some really good plays. Their howitzer in particular been, uh, has been very effective. Uh, well, not their howitzer, but um, Full Sin's howitzer has been very effective. But if Full Sin would just coordinate their damage a little better, they, they, they would be taking this game with ease right now. Absolutely. And we've seen that, that the teams have just, they've started out, the team fights have started out really well, but they focus usually one target down on Team Pyro's side. But then from there, the damage just falls apart and they lose all five members of their team to a team fight. I'm going after the deer once again. And there's What's not a lot. Team Pyro is nowhere nearby to contest. This will basically be a free Prime Spirit unless Deckard can pull off some kind of great steal. Rampage comes through. But it does go over to Team Full Send. Now, a disengage should be coming through, you would expect from these teams. But maybe a fight's going to come out. No, both teams don't want to fight this anymore, backing out to their respective sides. Now, that one or two or three, it's either two or three. It is two. Uh, prime is Spirit two prime Full spirits. Send. Alter has the ult to escape. That fight is very out dangerous. Howitzer does get game. stunned by the Decker, getting caught in between. Ooh, does get in mind to push himself out of there. It's going to be very, very close. Feng Mao fighting it out. We've got the Wraith ult going down. Right. Decker got very, very low here. Going back around the fight, Feng Mao dashes into the fight, but gets bopped out by the Shield Bash from the Murdoch. Steel ult coming out now on Grux and Rampage. Grux lands a beautiful pull on three people, but the damage just is not there. He is not supported by his team at the moment. Belica picks up a Wraith kill. Absolutely very bad for Pyro now. Twin Blast popping off. How Rampage. By Rampage after landing a, a super powerful missile. <laughs> and Rampage and does go down to, to the howitzer. Rampage. A teleport comes out and the Murdoch is able to get out of there. But that is three deaths for Team Pyro despite being in a the definitive lead in that attack. fight at the initial moments. They just did not coordinate well enough and were going in one by one. And we see in the chat even people are saying that people were baiting teams into team fights. And I completely agree there that the teams were they were disengaged completely and then they went back in on each other for seemingly no reason. There's no objective to fight for. There's no real kills that are up for grabs. That was just a fight for the sake of fighting. Now, Pyro has been doing, I think, a better job of warding than Full Send has. Full Send's, um, it's, it's two hands is keeping Full Send in these games um, <laughs> when he's not checking bushes with his face. <laughs> Absolutely, Mangus. We see two hands here at eight, four, and two. Howitzer doing well at six, two, and five as well. A fight breaks out. Howitzer, dude, this Howitzer is getting caught every time he goes into this mid lane. Has to jump out. Does a beautiful jump into the uh, shadow well, however. But unfortunately, did take a lot of damage and had to use his ultimate to disengage. Uh, again, the, the Feng Mao must be having connection issues because the Feng Mao has dropped out of the game. A stun mile wide comes from the Rampage and Decker lands the stun <laughs> for the kill up. on Howitzer. Double stun combo. What a classic. What a Paragon classic. The Decker Rampage double Ooh. stun combo. Absolutely amazing plays from Team Pyro <laughs> on that kill. Team Pyro will now oh, be able to push great. up and theoretically take this tower with relative ease, but they get pushed out actually by the steel wall rampage or feng mao and wraith coming through but twin blast comes oh, around behind in the background two man takes out the bellica but goes down himself to a grux grux now trying to pressure this wraith out of the game but a lot of the damage just fell off with two hands death they've got a steel feng mao and a wraith oh wraith just absolutely Grux getting bodied by the damage but getting taken out here feng mao now going in on the decker of all things does land the execute though makes sure to make use of it but will go down himself uses the ultimate twice now steel caught on the other side of a bad team fight and goes that was not worth a kill on decker that was not worth a kill on decker 
in no in no way, shape, or form is he going to get away. He does get away. Howls are coming back into the fight, firing from the shadow Ooh, well. We've got He's the got Murdoch power. just He's launching nades, advantage. trying to get out there. Howitz is going to have a very like hard time contesting them. We're going to see the first tower go down in favor of Team Pyro. Ooh, oh, Howitzer coming ultimate. out. Still Makes going to take the tower, but a good stun comes out of here by Rampage, and Murdoch just goes in, taking damage out. Murdoch has been in the right place at the right time several times throughout this game. We're going to see a blink come out of the Murdoch into the Shadow Well. Twin Blast blinks, but does not catch up with him. Rampage is on the wrong side of the map here, getting caught out by three members of the team. Catch Murdoch out. And perfect. Fanatic's dessert was on cooldown. He had, that had been popped by the Twin Blast ultimate. Ultimate able to... And Twin Blast able to take Murdoch out quite easily. Looks like they're rallying forth, pushing into the mid lane. They're going to chase down. It looks like Decker set a ward on the prime. Perfect. A good idea from her. And the other thing we're seeing as well is that the oh, left... They're going to go for it. They're going for prime. Full send is going for prime. They're going to full send it on prime. <laughs> the dual lane tower actually did go down in favor of Team Pyro as well. The minions were able to push it down finally. So that's two towers for both teams right now on to the prime guardian. Prime guardian just over half health right now. Windblast picks up an easy kill on that Decker. Going through now is Grux trying to get in there. He knows that the Wraith is very low. Lands a good pull, but ooh, Wraith actually takes the portal out while they take out yeah. the Bellica. This is very dangerous there. A lot of their damage went through the portal and a lot of their utility. Twin Blast now fighting off the Grux while the team takes out the Prime Guardian. Prime Guardian just over half health still. Twin Blast picks up Grux another kill on Grux. Now they're still fighting the, the, the Prime and the Prime is still very healthy. And they've got Rampage coming in to see what he can do to try and stop this take. Howitzer making it rain. The Rampage is ulted up. He's, he's got all that health regen. And, and uh, Fig Mal is taking damage from Prime, and he's taking damage from, from Rampage. Rampage. Wow. What Feng Mao the hell just happened? picks up the Prime and does a ton of damage, taking out several members of the team Pyro and able to take the Prime for his team. But, ooh, Wraith goes down to Murdoch. Murdoch gets rewound actually back into the fight. Unfortunately, that Wraith ult, or the Wraith we rewind, actually hurt his team. Murdoch cleans up the rest of these kills even though Team Full Send takes Prime. And that's the uh, uh, Pyro's inhibitors are, are, are fairly low, it seems, from that Prime take. We're looking at just under two pips on the right lane tower, just under about two thirds for mid lane, and then also just under two thirds on the left lane. So the mid and left lane, that was all prime damage to that to, to, to those inhibs i think Absolutely. it looks like pyro is going to try and take this deer they're still sticking in there they're sticking in the fight full sin definitely has the advantage in this match and if they do win this match they win the semi-final series here yep full send is best uh has one win right now in a best of three they really need to take this but that is the first prime spirit we've seen pyro take this whole series so far mangoose and that's a, a good thing for pyro pyro is ahead on kills right now Slightly behind on objectives, but is able to still stick in this match with no inhibitors down. There's still potential for Pyro to stick out and win this match and take it to a best of three. It's like full send charging up the right lane. They catching Rampage with his pants down. He throws the rock and misses it. Howitzer's going to cruise in from the side, but he's going to disengage. Probably a good idea as Pyro is back up and they are charging this lane. Nice double knockup. Ooh, absolutely beautiful coordination with CC from nice Team Pyro here. Ooh. Two hands going down Rampage very low. They don't even have the Murdoch. Murdoch teleported across from the dual lane to the right lane. Murdoch is coming up behind Team Full Send here. Team Full Send will, has no idea he's there. Bam, Mert Howitzer going down, taking a lot of damage. Bam, we see Wraith going down. Absolutely beautiful plays. Feng Mao pushing the mid lane for Team Full Send does not participate in that fight, but Murdoch's teleport is absolutely on point for Team Pyro. Yeah, he was able to clean up after that. After that, really well court. I think Pyro has the better team fight in the, in this game. It's just that they have to be able to take advantage of these team fights. They do finally get that tower down. That is now Murdoch, either well, even on damage. towers. Murdoch is pushing up through that left lane. There are still three members dead on Team Full Send, but Team Pyro will be backing to spend some of that gold that they just accrued. Steel having to hold the mid lane up for Team Full Send. Uh, 
I thought they were going after, after the, uh, the the private spirit. Private spirit's down. <laughs> Rux did not commit actually to that full jungle camp. Just took one minion and then left. Got scared that the rest of the team was showing up. Let's check in on this mid lane. We're trying to get some wards out from the Wraith as well. Absolutely, I mean, a much closer game for both teams this time around than compared to last game. Mm -hmm. Pyro has definitely learned their lessons. We see Howitzer getting caught out in that mid lane once again. This Howitzer, luckily he did not take a ton of damage this time, but every time he's up in that mid lane, it seems like something's going south for him. <laughs> yeah, Seismic Assault just missed him. If that would have hit, that would have been a dead Howitzer more than likely, or at least his ultimate down. Absolutely. Now let's look at the leaderboard for this game, Mangus. We've got, I mean, two hands absolutely dominating the game once again. 13 and 7. How is it doing really well as well? But Murdoch Flamma on Team Pyro, 24 and 4. Five items completed for him, as well as five items completed for two hands. It really will come down to which of those carries is allowed to survive in team fights, and whichever one does is going to take the team fight for his team or for their team. I didn't realize Murdoch had been doing so well, to, to, to be honest. He's been the pickup and the cleanup crew for all of those team fights that have gone south for full send. I mean, ooh, we've got an ultimate out from Steel. It's a big ultimate to waste. Two hands takes a ton of damage from the Bellica. Now the team fight is breaking out. We're seeing some of this break out here from the team. Rampage getting in there, being able to stun out Feng Mao. Feng Mao will go down. We'll switch over to the Murdoch. Murdoch chasing down. Who two hands baited his team into a fight there and just absolutely abandoned them when he took too much damage to stay a present in that fight. Flamma also just able to deal massive, massive amounts of damage. So we got Grux running through the jungle. We got uh, Full Sin had to just completely back out and go into a defensive posture there. Good idea from them. They did not want to take that fight. Howitzer once again taking the high ground from Howitzer loves to snipe people from that shadow well. And Murdoch takes a ton of damage, but he does have red buff. He does have life steal. Decker doing whatever she can do. Can Decker get a if Decker can get a cage right here? This will be a very nice fight. Steel Ooh. is very low. That was actually Bellica's ultimate on a one-hit steal. That seems like a waste to me. Flamma and Two Hands now fighting it out. They know that they it's gonna come down to which one of them survives this team fight. But ooh, Two Hands goes down, takes out Bellica with him, but Flamma goes down as well. We will see if this team fight continues. We've got Rampage in the fight here, taking out Wraith. The Howitzer taking back, and Feng Mao now in there as well, trying to take somebody out. Rampage ulted off. We just saw Rampage fight Feng Mao. The, the death timers in this game, I think, are a little too short. <laughs> Random rock thrown through, <laughs> through the lane. But Big Prime does come back up as well. They don't have a lot of damage, so honestly, I, this is going to be a very difficult Big Prime for them to take, but it looks like they're just playing Proxy. Up on wards. They're playing Proxy for Team Full Send. Full Send is on Feng Mao, we're going to see here. Feng Mao just took his blue buff, not going to go check this uh, Full Prime Guardian. They do have wards up, so they know what's going on. Howitzer cruising through. Howitzer, you got to watch out, buddy. He keeps getting picked off in the mid. He is going to de-ward for Full Sin. So now Full Sin has complete vision of the Prime and uh, Pyro does not. A Prime for Full Sin here could be very effective. It could mean that they take two or three of those inhibitors down on Team Pyro, which would be very, very dangerous for Team Pyro to stay in this game. This game could easily come down to this next Prime fight. Bellica getting picked off by the Howitzer and the Feng Mao. Feng Mao missing his execute on his ultimate, but Howitzer going up with the ultimate and taking it out. That's two ultimates down for Team Full Send. Bellica down for Team Pyro. Grux going in there, two hands, getting pushed back. Ooh, Grux getting rewound, unfortunately. Two hands still surviving. All the CC going out right now. Two hands does take out the Grux. Flamma getting picked on by this Feng Mao, and we've hit the point where Feng Mao is a really hard person to kill. Two hands. Taking up the kills, picking up Feng Mao, just keeping Murdoch segmented out. That is a full five-man team wipe. Triple kill to two hands. We could see the end of the game here very soon, Mangus. 20 seconds yeah, on Bellica's respawn. Do they take prime or do they just push this mid inhib? It looks like they're just going to push the mid inhib. Again, you don't really need minions. As if they can get steel in there to take those tower shots, uh, the, the rest of the team can melt that inhib as they're doing right now. That hip goes down very easily. Now, what do they do now? How do they take advantage of this fight? They got Twin Blast is very low, but he does have the blue buff. Uh, they're just going to rotate over to Prime Spirit. Or are they going to rotate over to Prime Looks Guardian? like they are just, like just resetting. 
They know that it's dangerous to take Prime Guardian if the enemy team decided to show up and that goes south for them. That could put them in a tough spot for this game. They can just hold on to their lead by pushing the inhib, backing, resetting it, and taking a Prime Spirit while they're on it. Swiftix, how you doing, man? Oh, it looks like we're going to see the steel clearing wards over in this prime jungle. Grux watching to make sure they don't start at Rampage also nearby. But we've got the Twin Blast pushing mid in with those Super Teons as well. It's going to be hard. They have to defend that mid lane. They're going to look for a pick on two hands here. Are they going to receive it? No, they're going to back out. Two hands will not make it out. But Feng Mao on the wrong side of the jungle for the, his team. Ooh, this hidden. will turn into a full 5v5 team fight. Let's see what's going down. Everyone's kind of hanging out here for a minute. Twin Black starting with the oh, ultimate. Oh, big steal ult. I'm, I'm expecting to see a big steal ult at any moment now. Rock's taking a lot of damage. See a fight breaking out on the left side. How is there ulting a lot of people? Two hands is able to deal a lot of free damage. Bam. Grux goes down. Two hands. Is, oh, Wraith goes down. Howitzer goes down on the left side. The ADC fights are taking place on two different parts of the map. Murdoch going to fall, however, which means that this fight will probably go to, and it does, go to full send with two hands still alive on the map. That's two team fights in a row that they have completely dominated. What are they going to do with this one? What are they going to do with this one? Twin Blast healing up off that minion wave with ease. They could very easily take this prime, and they are going to start it up. They are uh, they are caught on wards. Pyro knows what's going on, but can they come back in time to stop it? Prime, very tanky, even after the nerfs. But we've got a Twin Blast and a Feng Mao on this prime. Let's see if they can get it. We have 10 seconds before the Grux even respawns Mangus as the first member of Team Pyro. This will just be a flat-out kill this prime. prime. Boom! Oh. And minions oh. are on the core here. We've got core down to 25%. The core is taking a lot of damage from that prime. 15%. Grux goes past the core. This could end the game. Oh, he oh, took the Grux. He oh, have taken the 9.5. Oh. oh, they take it. Full send takes the series. Oh, man. Unfortunately, Grux taking the jump pad there actually lost his team the game right in that moment. That is unfortunate yeah. for Team Pyro. They tried and played a really strong game, but two hands on carry was just able to outdo Team Pyro. By himself effectively that's gotta feel bad whenever you hit that jump pad it goes shooting past all those minions and thinking i just fucked up <laughs> <laughs> oh man that sucks that that is that that's terrible that hurts right there uh pyro definitely put up a better fight this this match but full sin just clutched it out with two team fight wins in a row in the late game and they were able to capitalize on both of those team fights um that I think that's what we've seen for both of these games is Full Send was able to capitalize on team fights a little better than Pyro. We saw Pyro backing a lot after they won the team fights to spend their gold instead of pushing forward with their advantage and taking objectives. Whereas Full Send, whenever they whenever they got a few picks and whenever they won a team fight, they pushed forward with it, took an inhibitor or took the the prime. Uh, they just did a better job of capitalizing, even though they I think um, the, the their Achilles heel is splitting that damage. They. A full send if they if they can have somebody on their team make the call on who they need to be pushing their damage on they will do much much better in all of these games yeah absolutely and they did a good job there in the late game actually of coming get more together as a team right that the twin blast in two hands was able to make it it seemed like twin blast was making the call i'm on this person then you've got grux and feng mao assisting him there with howitzer and steel kind of keeping everyone else at bay kind of pushing them back get you guys stay away from this fight we'll let twin blast clean up over here and then he'll come back over to this when he's well and ready and absolutely just dominated the game by doing so. Let's take a look at some of these stats, however, Mangus. Damage to heroes. Murdoch actually out damaging the Twin Blast in the offlane. 55,000 damage to heroes versus Twin Blast 50,000. And we saw Murdoch absolutely doing a very good job, but just getting sectioned off in those end game team fights. And it just hurt his team and their damage output by itself there. Let's take a look at damage taken. I want to see which one of these tanks absorbed the most damage. Damage received from heroes. There we go. Rampage absolutely taking it. And Twin Blast actually in the second spot <laughs> for most damage taken from heroes. How does that happen? <laughs> absolutely incredible is what he that is. He healing up so much <laughs> through so much damage. <laughs> that is insane to have a Twin Blast second in charge for damage taken on a team that won 
on a team that won. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Just uh, yeah, twin blasts, twin blasts peeling, absolutely incredible. Him giving, <laughs> being able to get in and out of those fights. I mean, damage dealt just in general. Twin blast, just he does not main sev. That's a lie. Oh rip. <laughs> All right, though, we are going to see the teams switched up. So we're going to flip these around. So we got RPP in blue and full send in red. Yep, absolutely. And I've I seen full send in blue wait. this entire this entire time. So it's going to be very confusing for me. <laughs> there we go. Neft already on the Revenant. He, he, they knew. Okay, Neft dominated on Revenant. We're going to pick the Revenant. If they're not going to ban it out. That's our first pick. Wraith making it through this pick. But now, the interesting thing, Empty is now on Murdoch. We've got Zhang Ooh. on Severog. Sam on Feng Mao. The Grux is banned, remember, everybody. Rampage and Steel coming through for Team Full Send. Twin Blast on two hands once again. This is going to be a Wraith carry. Twin Blast in the off lane. No, wait. Three carries. Sorry. Sparrow carry. <laughs> Wraith mid lane. Twin Blast in the off lane. This is a five carry game, everybody. Every carry in the game is now in this game. In the words of Will of Defoe, it's going to be a fire fight. <laughs> We're absolutely excited to see how this plays out. Everybody going to show their best foot here. And here we go into game two of the finals. In the name of the hero. RPP in blue, full send in red. Let's see how they go. Uh, a, a mid lane Murdoch. That's pretty interesting. I've seen it done quite a quite a bit. And it's going to be mid lane Murdoch into mid lane Wraith as well. So we're going to see oh, really? everything coming out from these guys. Mid lane Murdoch into mid lane Wraith. Off lane Twin Blast. Team Full Send has a carry in all three lanes. <laughs> now we got to see if Wraith actually builds carry, if he builds magic damage, or if he goes... What, I would think he does. with the composition that Team Full Send has, you really need Wraith to be building that magic damage. You need some magic damage somewhere. Otherwise, you're going to have the tanks on Team uh, RPP, like Severog, for instance, is just going to build anti-physical damage and just dominate because of it. Oh, we've got a fight yeah. breaking out. Empty fighting Garo in the mid lane. Wraith v Murdoch. Half health on the Wraith with very little damage done to the Murdoch. Boom. Just like that. Just like that. The game and is he already is, off to he has a lost priority. spicy, spicy Now Wraith can start. stand back and snipe the shit out of him if he can hit those snipes well. So this might be... Uh, and he is, he is hitting him. Some very interesting plays though already coming out. Oh, we're going to see something interesting happening here. A level one bush gang coming out of Team RPP. Rampage showing up. Yep, they did a lot of damage to that steal. Neft trying to get out of there. Ooh, Rampage oh, gets stunned. Oh, Neft has to blink out. Done. Blink is coming through from everybody. Narbash lands a perfect thunk on the Sparrow, keeping Neft alive. Lots of blinks have been spent, but nobody will go down. The priority there was great. They were stunning the ADCs to try to, to lessen the damage. You see it too much where your support or your jungler will just stun whoever's closest to your ADC. No, you got to stun that ADC. You got to stun that. They stun the Revenant right off the gate, and then they stun the Sparrow to uh, to, to save Neft there at the end. Absolutely. Brilliant gameplay. Rampage runs across the mid lane trying to give Garo a little bit of space in that lane. Really exciting gameplay so far for everybody on these teams. Neft healing right back up, that Narbash heal, and, and the potions that he brought also just providing a lot of sustain for him, while Steel's gonna have to stay low in this lane and potentially back, providing a very bad spot for Sparrow. Once we look at this off lane though, we've got Twin Blast two, on two hands. Again, absolutely doing very well, pushing Zhang under tower, keeping him from, all, from getting on these minions, but about to push the tower down. Now, does Twin Blast stay here to provide, provide some pressure, or does he keep... He, he does damage Zhang a little bit, pulling some minions out of the tower range, but getting a lot of his still under there. Zhang should be able to go up and get some free farm on this without any issue at all. This Twin Blast is just... He's ballsy. He pushes up so far. Um, I, I want to see it punished. I want to see it punished hard. Absolutely. Feng Mao, I mean, the RPP Feng Mao is in the enemy... Rampage's jungle, so he's not going to be showing up in that off lane anytime soon. We're then looking at the dual lane. Dual lane doing very well. A perfect steel wall, though, coming to save through the Sparrow. If that didn't go up, Sparrow would probably have gone down in that instance from the Revenant. Oh, 100%. 100%. Oh, 
If we go to the mid lane, though, we're looking at a Rampage gank coming through. Murdoch is pushed up slightly. Rampage coming through with a rock. Lands the stun. Murdoch coming it. in. Ooh, empty doing a lot, but not... Ooh, going back. Interesting play oh. from empty jumping into the Wraith there. I wonder if that was a misplay or not, but... Wraith gets the first blood of the game. Severog now coming to the mid lane, trying to land a Subjugate. Will it go through? Ooh, the Subjugate does land a brilliant, brilliant play. Garo has to blink out of there. Sparrow goes... Sparrow actually picks up a kill in the duo lane. Severog still trying to chase down, but gets rewound back to the base. Three people died in that duo lane fight that we uh, unfortunately missed watching this mid lane. We lost Revenant, Narbash, and Feng Mao all in the duo lane. Sparrow picking up one kill and the steel picking up the other two no I, I do think that was a smart play from empty that he blinked into the to the wraith because he was dead either way so i think he just wanted to try and make it a one for one at least but didn't work out for him see and i i without rewind because he was wraith was still level two so there was no rewind in play murdoch blinks out rampage already used his rock murdoch's home free right true I think later in the game, absolutely. Empty fighting it out for this uh, jungle buff now, dealing a lot of damage to the Wraith, but Rampage now coming Rampage in coming as well. In. Rampage jumps on in, no problem. Gonna take the rock out probably and land a stun, but the blink comes out from Empty, but Empty gets rewound back into the fight where, with Wraith, Rampage, and Empty. Empty's got to get out of there. Feng Mao now coming in for the assist, but Empty goes down. What we're seeing is we're seeing um, full send punish the ADC pick mid lane, but we're not seeing RPP punish the ADC pick in the off lane. Oh, we actually it might be seeing that right at this very moment, Mangoose. RPP Finally, coming in on the Feng Mao, but two hands. Dude, speeding out of there. What Absolutely the hell was that? brilliant. I think he was bunny, bunny hopping in to, uh, travel mode. Two hands is going to take well, some damage there. But travel mode just now, but... By no means is two hands in any kind of danger at the moment. What Ooh. an escape. Ooh, okay, he my might even, goodness. He almost got the old thing. We got another subject coming through from, from the Severog. Severog has to get out of there, though. Not any good things happening. But over in the duo lane, we see Wraith making a rotation over, but it is spotted on a ward. You see Neft and uh, the support Narbash trying to keep the lane in their favor, but Wraith does end up backing. So this is back to being a 2v2, but we're going back to the off lane again, Severog getting jumped in by the Rampage and the Twin Blast, pushing him out of the lane, no mana to help him get out of there. But Rampage is basically standing guard saying, please step back up, we'll fight this out. <laughs> oh, or not, Rampage will just let him will I wasn't take the minions. Back and uh, two heads is going to take that, the, the, the green buff. The green solo lane buff. Yep. And then he's going to back just so he can deny it from the Severog. Now we're back into the duo lane. Duo lane still pushing back up again. A gank could come through from Rampage. Rampage is walking through the blue side jungle for team full send. It's going to be very interesting to see what comes through from these teams. This is a very different full send than we saw in that first game. The full, full set is, is, is being very coordinated this time around. Um, this is a much spicier game. Like, it, it was kind of a stomp from the beginning the last time, but this time, full set has got their stuff together. Absolutely. I think they're doing a great job of keeping the pressure in these lanes despite them maybe being pushed up or pushed out of them. Like, for instance, this duo lane, having the Narbash on Team RPP is very valuable, but they're doing a good job of keeping up against it and even got that triple kill earlier in the game. If we go look at mid lane, we've got the Wraith doing a good job of pushing up the lane while Empty is gone. He's taking this opportunity to, to push up, get some gold, get some advantage in the lane so he can either rotate or back. And it looks like we're seeing a rotation coming out of him that will follow up in a second. Off lane, just a very good duel back and forth here between uh, Twin Blast and Severog. All right, but we're going to go back to the dual lane. Rampage is setting up for a gang. Twin or Steel uses his dash to get in there. Revenant ults the Sparrow. They're fighting it out in the darkness uh, waiting we can see what was happening sparrow jumped off the edge there it seemed and, and, and neft is going to use that to escape the Probably twin blast teleports across part. actually so now it is a 4v2 in this duo lane feng mao is nearby but it's going to be very very close we see the murdoch pick up a kill in the mid lane these guys fight at the same time everywhere they go <laughs> empty now coming around for the rotation onto the earth spirit this is going to be a fight on Earth Spirit. Good Narbash stun comes through. Low. Sparrow goes down to the Feng Mao Ultimate Steel. Now forced to get out of their Rampage, trying to force a way out. But Severog steals the short portal from Prime Underling Pit to the Prime Spirit Pit. Rampage will go down. 
Now, we've also got Murdoch duking it out with two hands in the jungle here. Two hands will pick up the kill, but he is going to struggle. Ooh, blink nice over the blink edge. The wall. Absolutely incredible. Two hands get blinked well, on, though, by Feng Mao. Revenant picks up the kill. Incredible fighting from these teams. Earth Spirit Sharp did reset. going to get this Earth Spirit. Which means that now, the, so the Wraith places a ward down on the Earth Spirit. No, they have the vision. Sparrow's coming back through. Sparrow looks like she is picking up the blue buff, however. Let's see. It looks like the Earth Spirit's going to go down without any issue for Team RPP. Oh, wait. Did, did Ray snipe it away? No, he didn't. Uh, another fight's breaking out, though. This is a team fight number two. Sparrow is involved in this fight. Steel is really struggling. Very low health to get out of here. But the whole team of RPP is also in that same boat. Very low mana. Very low health throughout this all. They need to back out, which means this could be a free tower for team full send. We'll have to wait and see what happens here. But a fight broke out between empty and two hands in the mid lane. I really thought that full send... Um had stolen that uh that earth spirit with the race snipe mm, yeah i'm trying it to hit close. it through the it wall close. absolutely but mini prime is up we saw mini prime be the basically the most effective object objective on the map last game so absolutely we're gonna see this be a very important objective this game got a little bit of a mid lane oh he dove forward into that i don't know if that was what you wanted to do empty he does take a stun. He does take a lot of damage, but he's Big got some coming in. Wraith, very Big low now. mana. A good ultimate comes nice. out from this Snipe. snipe. From empty. Let's see. It doesn't look like Feng Mao. Feng Mao is overstaying. He does not have the backup here. He does not have the damage to compete, but gets the execute on the rampage, but will oh, die. Wait, he does get sniped in the back as he tries to leave the fight. I mean, knock, knock, they dude. It's, one for one. Wraith is definitely in to play this game. Absolutely. Let's check on our off lane here. Two hands, a little bit lower than Severog. Severog doing very well for himself in this lane so far, surprisingly. But we're going to see Steel over in the duo lane, checking for Narbash, trying to keep this mana buff in their own favor. Narbash does not know that they have that bush warded, so they are keeping a very keen eye on everybody. And now we have wards placed on the side. Nobody is nearby for a gank, but the mid lane. Severog coming in for a gank here on the mid lane will not pick anything up. Narbash forcing Steel off of the dual lane as well. Rampage went in after the uh, Severog to try and chase him off that mid lane. Lots of exciting Meanwhile, things happening, but no his, uh, kills coming from it. Cryo on the, uh, on the off lane, but he does back as he shoves the lane under the tower. The ally tower is and this is what we've attack. seen a little bit from Full Send as well, is not pushing that advantage just a little bit more. Not being able to... Yes, we saw Severog in the mid lane maybe get a couple extra hits on that tower. Maybe keep the pressure on a little bit more for each of these lanes. And that really hurt them in that game against RPP last time as well. It really did. Oh, uh, we see Severog might be getting ganked over here. Twin Blast going in after him, but we've got a big... It looks like a big fight breaking out. Twin Blast using his ultimate smacking Ooh, very good right good ultimate coming out of Feng no! Mao. Feng Mao. Yes, the crash destroying down. Destroying it. Rampage now coming in trying to do something. Feng Mao is probably going to use that second cast of his ultimate shortly here. Neft coming around from the dual lane as well. They could be trying to just push this tower down or take another kill from Rampage. They know this first yeah, tower is very this. important, but they're going to go on Rampage. Rampage is going to be very low. Rampage one hit. He, Neft all, might be able to take it out. Exactly coming right through. Moment. But Neft does. 100 extra alt, gold alt for now. Takes him down. But do they get the tower? They do not. They do have minions now. They are disengaging from that it. tower, so we're going to see the dual lane push in pretty hard because Narbash is certainly not going to be able to stop the Sparrow and Steel combination. Looks like they're going to rotate over to take the Roadhog. Oh, Narbash getting forced out a little bit by the steel does steel does not want him to be able to proxy those minion waves in the slightest revenant is now actually they're heading back for mini prime revenant is not going back to the dual lane they know that they have priority on this mini prime right now think with everyone in the left lane and to have a decent opportunity to go take it all three towers against the team full send are decently low and have the opportunity for a full prime underling to take them out and, and they're no, gonna take this no words in the pit from full send uncontested they had no idea that that was going on just now we saw neft take the short portal away from underling to the prime spirit which should give a little bit of an advantage here 
we don't have the prime underling on neft so we're going to take a look at feng mao feng mao is carrying the prime underling he may just walk over and drop it under this mid tower but not quite it looks like he's trying to look for a gank duo lane is making something happen but back in the mid lane feng mao trying to go in make something happen looks like the rampage and wraith were able to keep this from going sideways on him Ooh, but in, is, is definitely trying to defend this uh this drop uh, in the off lane we saw neft take David the short portal away. the colossal blow saved him as he is able to to dash away that colossal blow was really nice but it ended up saving the twin blast twin blast still running away a team fight breaking out on the other side of the jungle though everybody piling in on this team fight against rampage uh, subjugate lands to initiating it on rampage feng mao misses the ultimate going back the perfect ultimate from murdoch but we see two hands actually take out neft in the rev as the revenant they dueled it out and two hands came out as the winner leaving sparrow in the duel lane to push this duel lane in and potentially take a tower down we're gonna Full see is looking way better in this match way way better absolutely they've brought it back up they're doing the right things but the jungler drops the rift or the uh underling on the <laughs> mid lane i know what, what were you about to call it no 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 no, no. it's fine uh drops the underling on the mid lane dealing damage and taking that tower trading towers with the sparrow in the duo lane it looks like female's gonna piece it looks like they're all gonna piece out but they do get hit in the back of the head with a rampage rock and forcing them to fight he's just gonna jump into this fight and uh just act as a distraction real quick narbash wasn't going to get out of that that was a, probably a good decision for him let's the rest of his team get away absolutely this is a very close game mangoose nine to nine one tower each prime underling going down but neft gets caught out by the whole enemy team on full send this is a very different game than what we've seen before and they immediately rotate over for an objective this is what uh this is what we've been missing from full send is pushing that advantage it looks like they're pushing it right now to get themselves a prime spirit guardian absolutely they're going to take this effectively uncontested feng mao is coming around but against the full five-man team there's nothing he can do this will be a prime spirit for full send the enemy absorbs the energy of the spirit they need to get some wards in that prime pit they need to get wards in that prime pit absolutely the ward coverage if you look at the mini map is that rpp has complete dominance over the right side of the map on those wards that if you go anywhere in that right side jungle you're gonna get spotted colossal blow coming through from the Severog, knocking two hands away keeping hey, empty at bay, but this two, time. two hands didn't have a chance against Severog and empty in that that game yeah that was a much better colossal blow put him in the right position and he did not have the blink to escape that time so that was definitely a, a very good play taking advantage of that the push down another tower uh the objectives are definitely in favor of rpp yeah rpp pushed that right objective. lane down the tower and the minions in so the minions are going to provide some pressure on that right lane they also have some damage already on the mid inhibitor this next uh prime underling in a couple minutes here is going to be very very important this is game two of the best of three finals game for the eu get through gaming tournament rpp won the first one and we've got rpp and full send going at it and it looks like uh looks like full send is uh full send is kind of winning a lot of these team fights but rpp does have uh more more towers down and we have a one tower advantage for rpp looks like we're gonna see this revenant push in this side lane potentially to take another one here um but the teams are very neck and neck right now there's no standout person doing more damage than anybody else i don't think the thing we've seen really good this game is Feng Mao ultimates. We've seen multiple executions from that Feng Mao. Empty getting jumped on by Rampage and Wraith. Wraith is getting Narbash pushed off. Help. Narbash there to support him. No problem there. Absolutely beautiful. This team fight is perfect for this mid lane. But we're going to see a good tower take here. Put some pressure out on the tower. Damage going out. They're losing minions though. Neft taking a lot of damage. Steel ultimate comes out. Nice ultimate. Is oh, he couldn't charge it back into the tower because it doesn't do that anymore. But it looks like <laughs> Neft had the ult to try and get away. Is going to win this fight? He does, he does not. Does not. Rampage now showing up to take out this Narbash. Full send. Playing a very different game than we saw in the game one here. We've got the Twin Blast also takes the off lane tower. So now that is two towers each for both of these teams twin blast is also still pushing in on that right lane we're gonna see a fight still breaking out here rampage getting caught out by the narbash thunk and then a subjugate from the severog but this tower will not go down 
over on the other side off lane he pushed basically all the way up to the inhibitor and is now going to take some jungle camps a fight re-breaking out in this side lane empty now back into this fight getting involved in everything that's going on here severog back behind the wraith showing what's going on steel getting caught out rampage getting caught out sparrow is now involved murdoch ultimate coming out charging forward can they make anything happen doesn't look like they're going to get any kills because rampage did ult up so he's regening all of his health back nice subjugate lands from the severog and I don't think they're going to be able to push into this tower, though. I don't either. It looks like we're going to see. It looks like we might have two hands waiting in the jungle here for Neft to come through. Two hands now walking yeah, behind, behind Neft. Him. This is going him. to turn into a fight unless Neft can get out of there. He does get seen on some on a ward that Neft placed. So ward Neft is able to back out with two hands now running away. Oh, no. But now Neft is turning the tables. Now he's coming up behind Twin Blast and he's got some help. He's got some help coming in the form of Sebrog sneaking up behind him but two hands goes across the map takes the portal away <laughs> now stuck on empty empty has no form of escape no towers nearby no help with his team four members of the enemy team in full send are showing up to defend there is no teleporter empty uh, he, he will go to down take that teleporter but nope it was unavailable twitter just taking it prime underling did spawn here just a couple seconds ago but it does despawn at 19 minutes and 30 seconds which means it spawned and despawned in five seconds of itself and when it comes back up, it will be the full prime. Yep, and that is right now. Steel is walking to the mid lane, providing some pressure here. I mean, Steel's very hard to kill, so he can walk in there, no problem. Wraith gets a good uh, knock knock on the Narbash. Revenant getting bopped a little bit by the rock here. Uh, somebody takes the Wraith, takes the portal out into the prime pit. Absolutely insane gameplay from all of these teams. Narbash lands a great thunk on the Sparrow. Sparrow has to drop down, dropping oh, into the Severog oh, now. The she is going to be stuck in this fight. The whole team showing oh, up there. Fenton Mouth, Neft, the everybody's involved. Oof. Rampage now getting out of there. The team fight in mid is still taking place, though. Empty's now fighting out with Wraith. But it looks like Wraith that will... Poor Sparrow had nowhere to go. Absolutely not. No options. Zeng is Severog just providing... Is a beast a, right now. The uh, Severog provided some cover by just chasing them through their jungle. And what are they going to do? It's a Severog. They're not going to kill him quickly. He's going to escape. He's going to just be annoying on you. Absolutely great play by the Severog here in keeping his team in the favorable position here. Oh, Steel. A random bull rush yeah, in there. Could be detrimental for him. Yep, Feng Mao jumps in and an ultimate comes through. And it must have been just after the oh, Murdoch snipe yeah. because that was an instantaneous kill from Revenant onto Steel. <clears throat> Yeah, still, I don't know what was up that bull rush. Maybe that was a an accidental but button press or something, or maybe he was just <laughs> feeling a little froggy. I don't know. They immediately rotate over and start taking the Prime Spirit Guardian. RPP, this will be their second Prime Spirit. This will be the first Water Spirit they receive, however, if they get it, and they do. They're now looking to disengage, potentially. Severog playing proxy for everybody on his team, both teams backing out, playing safe. They know that any small amount of lead they give the enemy team could be detrimental for them. So they're all playing extremely safe, which is very different from the previous game that we saw Mangus. Yeah, we're seeing uh, much, uh, much better decisions from Full Sin's part this time around. I think, uh, I think they've been stomping everybody throughout. And then they came up against RPP and realized that they got to play a little more serious. Absolutely, and even RPP, knowing that they're a game up and could go into a third game if they needed to, are still playing very cautious as well. They're not making reckless plays. They're being very, very smart with it. Severog is on a ward, knows he is, but can't clear it out, so he just decides to get out of dodge. The full enemy team is in the red side jungle for Team Full Send. RPP is setting up around this prime. They know that this prime is the next big fight on the map, and everybody's gearing up for it. The enemy tower is under attack. Look at all those wards pinging. The enemy tower. Has been destroyed. Perfect. Minions on the left lane did push the tower down as well. The very nice plays from each of these teams keeping the pressure up that is three towers for team rpp two towers for team full send several several jockeying around position in the mid lane enemy team's just going to spread out they're going to look for some easier Ooh, this target is a very several. good subjugate on oh, the wraith. wraith getting caught out this is a very big one oh. wraith was able to blink away but very 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 lim limited they, they health I don't think they can. This gives them a little bit of priority, even though Wraith didn't die. That's uh, 
He's still extremely low. Too low to come back into this fight. Rampage landing a nice rock. Severog does pick up the Wraith on the other side of the map. Revenant now chasing down the enemy team. Nice. The portal is up, but Rampage, or portal's not up. Rampage did not take it. Ultimate comes out from Revenant on the Rampage. Rampage trying to fight it out. Steel now fighting it out with Narbash. The support duel is coming through. The portal is now back open. Someone needs to take it to Rampage keep it away, but away. no. Steel takes the portal, <laughs> gets out of the fight. No deaths other than through Wraith. All of them and straight through the portal. That was a really nice play by, by Steel to get away. Absolutely. They do know that Wraith is down for another 10 seconds. This could be a good opportunity for them to go work on this prime guardian and push and it up. Mid is very hurt right now, the entire team. Yep, absolutely. And they are going to go on to prime. They're making a prime play. They're getting pinged on a ward, though, it looks like. Nope, they, they have wards. The enemy team does it. They, now they have a ward. Let's see. Severog just stepped into it. Severog's it's going to be a 5v4. Interference. Initially, it will be a 5v4. Wraith is still on his way. Two hands coming around the backside. Two hands just get blown up by the Revenant and the Murdoch. Half health on the Prime Guardian. Prime Guardian will still be a part of this fight. Subjugate comes landing down from Severog. Severog still in the fight, tanking a lot of damage. Rampage, very, very low. Keeps a rock up in the air, Ram but Severog is able to dash towards him. They've pushed the team out of this fight. They now can return back onto the Prime Guardian. Empty still taking it. They will close out this Prime Guardian by themselves. Oh, that's going to be huge for them. That's going to be huge for them. Absolutely. Lots of damage on these inhibitors now coming through the game. Wraith now has to get out of here. This inhibitor, mid inhibitor, down to half health. Left inhibitor, two pips down. And the right inhibitor, two pips down, just from that Prime Guardian. Sebrog did a great job of getting in, a, in, in Full Sin's face and, and backing them off of that Prime. And uh, RPP did a great job of pulling that Prime away so that it couldn't be uh, smited easily. Absolutely. And they they're going to take an inhibitor. And they picked up a kill on the Wraith. Rampage has disconnected for Team Full Send. I'm not sure what's happening with that Rampage that he keeps getting disconnected from these games. But unfortunately, he will not be present. He is back in this fight. He's now up 5v4. Wraith is down for th another 30 seconds. They can keep going or they can escape. Hey, steel, steel Ultimate, ultimate, but, ultimate uh, coming through trying to keep that engagement. That. But the ooh, big steel shield as well, making them back up a little bit further. Revit or Severog coming in from the backside. Lots of damage going out on the steel. Not enough damage going out on the carries. They gotta Feng Mao able well. to get out of there. Rampage, subjugate lands on the Sparrow and the Twin Blast. Sparrow goes down. Steel like steel goes down. Be the next to fall. This and Revenant be old went this out on the game. Twin Blast. Twin Blast and Revenant duking it out right here in the mid lane. Twin Blast goes down. Now it is 1v5. Wraith has to now make up for this entire difference of the game or this could be the game for RPP. And Severog is just going to tank this inhibitor. No, they're going to run under it and they're going to take themselves another kill. Five takes down deaths. Full team ace. This could be the end of the game. Minions coming in. Two seconds on they Rampage. You need minions for this core. I mean, you don't need minions for inhibs. You kind of need them for the core. Those minions need to hurry the hell up. This could be the gate. This could be game set. This could be the tournament right here. This is the game finals match. match. The, the core is flying down 50%. Three members of Team Full Send still up. Let's see 30%, 25%. Teams busting out. Fights breaking out everywhere they can, but they're just focusing on the core. 3%, 0%. Staying on it. And. RP, or, uh, RPP wins the GTG EU tournament. Really well done. Great play for both teams. That was a much better match, I think, than the first one. 100%. The, the, it came down to that prime fight, and when that prime fight went off, they just kept fighting from then on out. I honestly think Steel re-entering that fight when they were disengaging pushed them over the edge and actually caused them to lose that game, unfortunately, because he just re-engaged a fight that was already over. And I think both teams played really well this time. Like it's it's hard to, to distinguish, um, you know, what strategy worked over over the other because they I think they both employed really great strategy and did really well. Um, but yeah, I think that was that was the tipping point right there was when that steel accidentally bull rushed forward and got wiped out and kind of baited the rest of his team into a an unwinnable fight. And then the the prime fight, of course, it was was definitely. It. I mean, that that Severog just blocking everybody off, making it so that the, the that full send couldn't come in and smite that away, and it just excellent strategy for both teams. Absolutely, but, they uh, RPP both... just had the better, the better uh, macro and micro gameplay. I think. The RPP team just played together. 
They were cohesive in everything that they did. Targeting was always on point. Whether they were fighting the Prime, whether they were fighting the enemy team, whether they were taking towers, it was always there. They were always in the right spot, always pushing together. Congratulations to the RPP team. Yep, well done, well done. Okay, guys, are we ready for interviews? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay, we start with RPP. Thing. Zhang, welcome. Thank you so much for taking a minute to talk to us. Congratulations on your team's win for the, the Get Through Gaming EU tournament. How are you feeling right now? Thank you, thank you. I'm very hyped. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that several play at the at the very end of the match there, um, where you were keeping yeah. them uh, running interference, keeping them off of that 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 prime orb. That was really well done. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, interesting to play Seth after I had to play like six games of Steel before. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So My Zang, do you think that? Just... Yeah. Do ahead. you think that that Severog ban that first game was targeted specifically at you that they know you're a good Severog player, or where do you think the the bans were throughout these games? Uh, to be honest, I played Severog one time before, and that was in a quick <laughs> game, <laughs> so it most likely wasn't targeted. I think. Uh, okay, but, well, but I mean, I, I did win that quick game though. So. You would have fooled me about this being your second Severog game because you were landing every subjugate that you threw. That thing landed on its target, rooted them in place, and your team capitalized perfectly. How were comms in your team? Were you guys really like always single minded? Where, where were your heads at going into each fight? Uh, so we did scrim a bit and we did see their scrims as well. So we knew they were always going to pick double ADC and like we basically knew that I'm not gonna have a fun time in offlane. <laughs> uh, ranged against melees is just there. Yeah, you just have to sit back and then wait until it's late game, and then they have no chance of ever winning the game. So yeah, we knew like it, the game doesn't matter. Like once it's 20 minutes, we win the game, and that's from draft. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys showed that we saw in previous games for Team Full Send that that duo offlane or that ADC offlane was very powerful for them and you just played calm confident and quiet and just let it play out without him getting a huge lead and it benefit you guys greatly yeah i think we had to drop like one spirit at the beginning but like what is one spirit for exploding the core so yeah <laughs> worked out what, quite fun what have your preparations been before this tournament have you guys been scrimming or been playing together a lot have you how have you guys been preparing for the tournament well, we made the team yesterday and we scrimmed the certified team a bit and scrims went quite well, but I, th I still think they are probably the second best team, um, which is quite sad because they like lost to us in like a best of one. It would have been pretty interesting to see them in a best of three as well. <laughs> and yeah, but like well played to, to the full send guys as well. That was probably that the hardest game like the, the second game like I, I wasn't 100 percent sure we would win that so props to them yeah i mean you guys oh, yeah. played really well that first game especially in this set of three you dominated took that inhibitor with the first prime underling which i think really set you guys on a collision course with a win there for the sure but the second game being a lot closer were you guys nervous at all could you hear it in comms were you feeling that the pressure of playing safer or how did you guys play differently in the second game comparatively I mean, we, it, it was a bit more hectic, but like it, it was still kind of chill. Um, we just did a bit too much. Like we, we should have just chilled a tiny bit longer and mm -hmm. like, I don't know, let the game run for five more minutes and then we, we just run the game. But I think it, it worked out in the end, like the, the mid fight at the end, we wipe everyone. We, yeah, we end. Yeah, absolutely. And great job to you, Zang, for like we said earlier, playing that kind of keep away or just mitigation force on Severog walk up, stand between them and your team, and then just land every subjugate that comes through, colossal blow, all that kind of stuff. Fantastic play from you, man. Thank you. I can't wait to watch the bot and hear you cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really well done. Great games all around. Thank you, thank you. Was there anything else you want to say to everyone in chat, anything to us, anything about your team in general? Again, congratulations on your win before the Get Through Gaming Tournament. Uh, no, I, I have to, to grudgingly give props to the tournament organizers. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> uh, like the, the, the games were like, 
I don't know, there were no delays, everything worked fine. Mm. So, good job <laughs> on doing that. Uh, it, it, it was it, a it, bit it, sad that like the first games were best of thank one. Thank you. Because like, <laughs> you, if you lose like one game and you're out, it's it's kind of boring for the teams. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's everything worked out fine. So all good. And he says in chat, this captain is kind of self obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and Her then Zhang, just real quick, what are your feelings on Paragon the Overprime as a whole? How are you feeling about the balance? Where do you feel the game state is in? And do you think that you used the game state to your advantage i mean you guys won clearly but or was that more to skill in your mind or was that like using the right game mechanics in the right places uh, i think like the, the first prime is stronger than the second one at least it, it feels like it especially if you only get the the first 20 minute prime mm -hmm. so just getting the prime underling just pushing an inhib pushing like for the win as we did like pretty much every game we played today and then you have like a game Ending at 20 minutes, I think that's like if you can like capitalize on, on those timings, then you're doing great. Awesome. Well, thank you, Zang, for taking the time to talk to us. It's Always. really cool to see you guys play it out and win the way you did as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's move on to the second being full sent. Yep. All right on. Welcome, Lockdown. Uh, fantastic games. We watched a couple of your games leading into that finals and then the finals game, of course. Um, yeah, congratulations on getting second place in the Get Through Gaming Tournament. That's absolutely huge for 20 teams playing throughout today. Great to see you guys come through and play these games. And so I want to talk to you about like this final, this second match of this finals match. You guys really played a really cohesive game and kind of kept up in the pacing of everything that was going on. What was your thought process going into that game? We went into that game thinking we got to change things up because they stomped us so hard game <laughs> one. Uh, like Tang Sang says, with uh, the double carry strat and they play for the late game, they don't feed the off lane. And, mm -hmm. you know, by the time, I think Neff took a box with two hands when he was like 6-0 and two hands was like 1-2 and it was a very close box. So if we didn't, if we didn't have, if we hadn't have fed the rev, so much on dueling i really think that game one was there to play for for us but unfortunately these guys they play they know what they're doing the top they're top you know they won the tournament for a good reason they play a lot of scrims together they've been playing a long time they're very experienced players and they know how to death ball and you know that seemed to be the difference maker even in game two when we're when we had a 5-1 lead we're thinking you know this is going to be our game this is ours to take but you know they've just got a, a really a really strong um spirit and they know exactly when where they need to be and when they need to be so they picked they made their picks and off the picks they managed to position well enough around the objectives and in this game it seems that the objectives really just decide that you know what's a t1 tower for the first prime and you know these kind of small differences that a team like they they have adopted so well those are the small differences that win you games essentially and for us coming into the finals I'm really proud of my team. I want to say a big shout out to CJ, to my hands, Chich, Atran, Crazy Legend. All of them have done really well. Uh, we didn't drop a game. I think our first game we went 32-0. I don't know if any other teams in this tournament had a an invincible game, but you know I'm definitely proud of that one. And it wasn't against the the best seeded opposition. But yeah, I want to say a big uh, a big shout out to to my teammates. A big shout out to the enemy team. I'm familiar with quite a lot of them, and you know well played to those guys. They deserve the victory today. That second game was amazing. That was great to watch. Um, both both of the teams, you guys and them, did a, an, an amazing job throughout, and it made it for made for a very exciting watch. Um, the, we'll ask you one of the same questions we we asked RPP. Um, how do you feel about Overprime? How do you feel about the future of Overprime? And um, just what do you think of the future of the game? Well, for me, I think that it's. It's, there's a lot of room to grow for Overprime. I think that there's a framework there that looks that looks good, but I think the gameplay itself is, for me, for someone that played Fault, I was lucky enough to, to get to test Fault. Um, I've seen a lot of iterations with it. Um, I've had a hands-on with Pred. I'm just looking for Overprime to take, you know, take it to the next level in terms of the gameplay side of it. You know, we had disconnects all throughout the tournament. Mm. I don't think we had a game without a disconnect. 
you know, even in the finals, I seen that you know a few of their players were disconnecting. I was disc I've got dodgy internet anyway, so I'm I'm disconnecting even if it's not a dodgy server. But um, I, I want to just I want to hopefully see more from Overprime in the in the coming months. Hopefully, there's going to be some some focus on the gameplay side of things. Uh, but Tang makes a good point about the first Prime being far. You know, it seems to be the most important buff before 20 minutes, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't make sense for that to come first. So. I think you know there's a lot of interesting concepts in the game. I like what I like the direction they're going on, but the core gameplay itself really needs for me it needs to be just ironed out. You know, a few small things, the shooting and small kind of like ping stuff as well and how it's how it runs when you're in game fights, uh, team fights with ultimates and everything going on. But yeah, very excited. It was good to see a new hero coming out this week as well. So let's let's see the the race will heat up with with Pred and OP and Let's see what happens. 100% I agree. It's going to be a fun time. It's a good time to be a Paragon fan, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Thanks a lot for everyone at GTG for organizing the tournament. Well done. Really smooth. And um, yeah, this, this has gone well. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you, Lockdown. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Okay, let's now move to the final interview of the day. Clue 9, the, fi the finalist for EU on the last tournament. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Oh, there you go. There we go. Clown9, you guys, you guys played very well. We watched one of your games earlier on in the tournament and you guys were the semi-finalists in the last tournament for the, when they had EU versus NA, you were the EU finalists. How did you guys feel going through this tournament this time around? Uh, is Conte is Conte near too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, should I should I start? Oh uh, yeah, you go. Okay, okay. Um, actually, we um we felt we we didn't really practice a lot the, during this uh, during this test. So um we we kind of felt the pressure of this tournament, but I think we maybe we did better than than uh, what 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 I personally thought. We we managed to reach the semifinals, and uh, honestly lost to a, a very good team. They they were um, definitely more experienced than us. So, but yeah, overall, overall, I think we we didn't do that bad, honestly. Yeah, I mean, for the games that we saw of you guys, you were playing really well, coordinated together, doing the right things on the map. So it's, it's still great to see you guys in this tournament as well. Do you think it would have been different if it was a uh, best one out of three for you guys for that map for that particular match? No, no, no. I think I think best of three uh, was better for us. Yeah, I think that as well. Um, even because right now the game uh, <clears throat> is kind of unbalanced. You know, you can flip an entire game with uh, with just a steal of a prime. Mm -hmm. For um, because uh, you know, you, the more you do it, the the more the damage it does. It can do ninety percent of your core at just the third. Um, prime so i think best uh, best of three is the best way to balance everything in a tournament right now right on um so you you mentioned you guys didn't practice enough what kind of preparations did you make before you uh, came into the tournament uh we we just played a bunch of rankings together most of the times mm -hmm. and uh we just we just uh, screamed uh a little bit, honestly, not not as much as we we wanted to, but because we had we had some some personal issues, so we we didn't really have enough time to practice. But um, honestly, I'm I'm not really. I think I I am. Uh, I mean, I, I feel I feel okay with with how it, with how it went, honestly. So it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> right, don't yeah, play next game. Yeah, we had uh, to swap the, uh, the yeah, our we... supper because uh, yeah. he had uh, other things to do, unluckily. So we just met a new player like uh, Friday, and uh, we put it, him in the team. Uh, he played well, even though we didn't, we never played with him. The support. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of happy uh, about how it went with all the team. I didn't uh, expect to go all this uh, so much coordinated with everyone, but we managed to do it somehow. 
Yeah, I think the my one of my bigger questions too is do you feel like the teams all evolved from the last test to this one? Do you think that the teams you faced were playing better, more coordinated games comparatively to the teams you faced in the previous tournament? Uh, personally, I don't think there was a, a really uh, growing uh, in the teams. Uh, more like the players were uh, were actually better. Mm -hmm. uh, in this tournament, we had we had some uh, more experienced players compared to the last ten, the last tournament. So yeah, yeah, I think we definitely saw individual skill playing a large role for a lot of these teams throughout the tournament. That we'd see one or two players consistently doing really well in each of their games. Yeah. I think a lot of that comes down to ADCs being so strong. So the individual skill expression is definitely a big part of the ADC play. Um, however, uh, Reglios, I'm watching you guys' first game. That was the first game that I watched today. You were laying it down with Howitzer in mid lane. Um, who do you uh, think is... Uh, I wish I could have played more Howitzer in this game. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think is the best mid laner right now? If, if, if I mean, obviously Gadget was banned out of every single one of these matches, but... Do you think Gadget is as powerful as people think she is? Do you think she deserved um, the auto ban? I I think uh, yeah, I think she she deserves the bans. But uh, honestly, in my opinion, Howitzer's damage output is uh, is is uh, is bigger than 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 Gadget's one. Mm -hmm. The the only difference is that Gadget's uh, Gadget has uh, slows in her in her kit, so she can uh, she can set up herself better than Howitzer probably. That's why I think Gadgets is... Uh, and also she has a poke, which is easier to land than how it says Q. Yes, but absolutely. <laughs> way, way easier. Yeah. yeah. The only downside of Gadget is that her Q prioritizes uh, allies instead of enemies. So in a fight, uh, if you put a Q on, uh, inside the, the brawl, uh, mm -hmm. you, you hit your ally. And if your ally goes out of the fight, uh, you don't have damage. Yeah. But the uh, DR is, uh, is just insane. Gadget Ultimate is uh, really strong. Yeah, Gadget Ultimate will change the tide of a fight by itself. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. Well, well thank you so much for the taking the time to talk to us. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for inviting us. I was on casting as always. And thank you even to GTG for hosting this tournament. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to to organizers. Yeah, congratu congratulations to the winner as well. They were really strong. They deserved it. Whoop yeah. yeah, definitely. Well played. GG. See ya. Thank you, guys. All right on. GG. Well, that was fantastic gameplay. Fantastic finals. Congrats to all the teams playing through this, right? We had 20 teams sign up, which is just absolutely wild. Uh, I mean, I know get through gaming was telling mangoose and i that teams were signing up up to the the whistle right like they were every, every second kind of more teams showing up which is super cool we're excited for na tomorrow right mangoose i think it's going to be really fun oh, yeah. to see all the na teams compete um and guys make sure if you're on twitch join the discord get through gaming discord uh, link below in the twitch go ahead and click that it'll take you right to it and join their community yeah, very exciting stuff today. Really enjoyed this tournament. This was, uh, I think, head and shoulders above the last tournament. Um, really exciting gameplay all around. And uh, I think if the viewers take anything away from watching these very competitive teams is that wards win games. <laughs> That's what you saw. That's the big difference you see, you see between these games and your standard quick match is that there are wards everywhere and constantly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, the Get Through Gaming team, I know you guys are with us in Discord. Do you have any final messages for all the viewers that are here in chat other than come to the tournament tomorrow? Other than that, not really. Thank you for watching. Thank you to for casting. If you want to register a team next time for a uh, tournament on Early Access, please do not wait for the last second. <laughs> <laughs> and other than that, no, it was a god. It was a great experience for all of us, and we're really looking forward for more. Yeah, we can't wait. It, I'm excited to see all the things you guys are going to do in the future, more tournaments and all the events you do in general. And thank you guys for putting it together. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for once again commentating for it and hosting us again. Of course. Japanese yeah. mongoose. Always so much fun. Mangoose!
Shout out to channel members Joshua Ben Noctis, J Man, Jelly Knees, Passion Guard, Malco, Hassan A, Nico, F6, Actual Dez, Dapper Dice, Lionheart Official, Blastoise King, Meow Mix for Min, Surge Ben, Covetous Lemon, Bearded Wolverine, Pizza Face, Pusey, El Draco King, Oda, Soul Reaper, Levy Version 2, Clorox TV, iBloodhunter, and Raven.